sebentar pak atur nuhun bu maha kami tahu sudah bapak silakan maaf saya mau ganti moda dulu <laughs> boleh ibu pakai laptop ya mangga bu Isa mangga terima kasih Assalamualaikum, Sadayana. Waalaikumsalam, warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Satur nuhun. Oh, ya, sami-sami, Pak Ubud. <laughs> ya, ya teh tekedah di iya, rinem, iya, na, namina, bapak. Ah, oh, tekedah, tekedah. Ya, <laughs> Mangga, Bu, pilih badai nganggai background virtual, parentos di share oh? dayin, embe, di... Oh, mohon, 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 mohon. Ya, mohon. Assalamualaikum Pak Ubat. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Tenap lima tetias mojokan video apa itu yang menuju perjalanan. Oh mohon mohon. Tetes saya baik. Ya saya baik. Wal mudah-mudahan selamat di jalan kade hati-hati. Paling gak gak mi ayah absen ngiringan lah itu Pak. Mangga mangga mangga. Kaya dia udengakan opa miling kangen daftar hadir na parentos di share di kolom chat Pak. Ya Ubat Pak. Ya mangga kulan Pak Bu. Bu Anggi sudah masuk katanya. Bu Anggi, selamat pagi Bu Anggi. Pagi, selamat pagi semua. Selamat pagi Pak Ahmad. Maaf saya tidak bisa menggunakan virtual background karena pecah di laptop saya. Oh, tidak apa-apa Bu, tidak apa-apa. Tidak apa-apa. Ya. Terima kasih Bu Anggi sudah Terima hadir. Terima kasih Bu Anggi sudah hadir. Saya saya bisa saya rasa tapi mungkin setting dalam account Zoom saya sudah tertutup. Kemungkinan oh. itu saya keluar dulu lah akan masuk. Oke, okay. okay. yeah, uh, okay. because you you are the last uh, presenter, so that's okay. Just take time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you though. <laughs> okay, I will be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Untan Pak Ubat, ada teman mau join, katanya sudah penuh kuotanya betul Pak. Sepertinya masih bisa kok Pak. Ini saya dan Pak Abu masih admit admit peserta. Oh begitu? Iya iya. Ya. Biar nanti saya kasih tahu temannya Pak. Mangga ya. mangga mangga. Eh, terima kasih. Mangga Pak, saya langsung.
did you finally manage to have the virtual background on? <laughs> I I did have my settings that it was off. So now I put it so it should be on. Okay, so I but I, have... I can be set that I am not able to yet. So why is that? Oh, backgrounds. Let me change backgrounds. Hopefully it is here. Okay. Hmm, belum juga. Why would that be? Belum juga. <laughs> Maybe I have not. What did it say? Um, oh, it is in my. Oh, it's in my. Background is pecah. Okay, to mohon wias, mohon wias bu. Dah meser hela iya, anu warna hijau hijauan. Yeah, betul bu. Itu memang ada saran dari Pak Abu Bakar tu harus warna hijau kata. Warna hijau, ya. Iya bu, iya selamat. Ya tidak apa apa bu. Ya tidak apa apa bu. Terima kasih sudah mencoba bu. Okay lah. Iya. Iya Pak. Sudah. Yang hadir sudah hampir 80 Pak Bert. Oke, okay, kita mulai saja mungkin kita ya. Saja karena sudah lebih 10 menit. Akan Baik. Ya. <coughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Bapak Ibu. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good morning to you all ladies and gentlemen. I wish you good health and safety amidst the pandemic of global of COVID-19. I know this is a strange, difficult and uncertain time. So uh, on behalf of the Directorate of International Affairs, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, first of all, I would like to express my deepest gratitude for you to be able to attend here. The Honorable uh, Director of Directorate of International Affairs, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Pak Ahmad Bukhari Muslim PhD, the Honorable Division Head of International Programs, Ibu Dr. Nia Nafisa, the Honorable Speakers, Apparently, we have uh, three of them uh, today. First, we have Bapak Gatot Supriyanto, PhD from Faculty of Economics and Communication, Bina Nusantara University. And second, we have Ibu Tri Anggraini Prajna, Praj, okay, Prajna Wardi, STMTM, PhD from Faculty of Engineering, Udayana University. I'm sorry if I mispronounce your name, Ibu. And we have Dr. Margaret Thomas from Faculty of Mathematics and Science Education, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. Thank you so much for coming. And the Honorable Deans, Vice Deans, Heads of Study Programs, Heads of Departments, Directors of Regional Campuses of Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, and Distinguished Participants of DIAS Webinar Series. Once again, thank you so much. And to those who attended last week's event, welcome back to the webinar series. And to those who just attended today, welcome to the US webinar uh, series. Last week, we had a fruitful discussions regarding the implementation of OBE, outcome-based um, education, and also uh, English classroom in international class. And today we're going to explore more from the experts who are going to share their best practices in international class instructions. But first, I would like to invite the director of DIA UPI, Director of International Affairs, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Pak Ahmad Bukhari, to deliver his speech and officially open today's agenda. Pak Abu, the floor is now yours. Thank you, Pobat. Can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, everyone. Selamat pagi and Wilajeng Enjing. Uh, it is an honor for me to give a speech here on behalf of Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia. First of all, apology from our rector, Professor Salahuddin, and also the vice rector for International Affairs and also Education and Student Affairs, Professor Didis Fieri and Professor Adam Seherman who cannot make it here because of their busy schedule, even in the weekend. They still have some other meeting at the same time. Uh, on behalf of UPI, first I'd like to extend my appreciation and thanks to the three honorable speakers, Dr. Gato Suprianto from Faculty of Economic and Communication, Venus uh, University, and also to Dr. Tri Angrani Prajnaudi from Faculty of Engineering, uh, Universitas Udayana in Bali, and also Dr. Uh, Mari Margaret Thomas, but we often call her Ibu Margi from Faculty of Math. Uh, the, 
this is our uh, second webinar series in internationalization. So as uh, moderator Pawad mentioned last week, we had uh, a discussion on uh, preparing the international program uh, with the speakers from our university. Uh, this is serious is a part of our program in implementing and expanding the internal association at University of Penicana, Indonesia. We understand that today internal association is very important. Everyone, all universities in the world uh, work, uh, do their best to receive international recognition uh, and also including our university. Uh, uh, why we invite the three speakers for this session today is for some reasons. First one, we understand that Dr. Gato Suprianto is the Dean from the Faculty of Economics and Communication. We know that Venus University is one of, I think, the most uh, advanced private university in Indonesia. If you look at, for example, their international ranking, for example, in QS ranking, in Times Education, I think Venus, I think, uh, deserve to get you know, uh, our attention. So we will learn from Pagatot uh, on how to develop and to run a trans program uh, from Venice University. Uh, for information, Pagatot was my, you know, Taman Seperjuangan. We went together to study at Monash. Jadi kita adalah teman lama yang sekarang bertemu lagi, Bapak. Uh, and also the second one we invite also from Udaya University. We know that Udaya University is one of universities with the most, with the highest number of international students. One of them is, of course, because uh, Udayana has very good programs. And also I think another one is because Udayana is also located in Bali, which is another attraction for international students. So we want to learn from Ibu Anggi, the best practices from Udaya University. And also, uh, Ibu Margi from UPI because we also know so far officially OPI, UPI has only one international program that, that is IPSC international uh, program in science education and Ibu Margi is one of very important figure in developing this international program but we UPI is planning to have more international program especially in year 2021 so we want to also learn not only from outside from Venus and also from Udayana, but also from inside, from uh, the Faculty of Math and Science Education. So we do hope that the three speakers will be able to, you know, enlighten our uh, ideas, knowledge on how to run international program. So once again, I'd like to thank the three speakers and also I'd like to thank the Dean, the Vice Dean, the Directors of UPI uh, Regional Campus, as well as honorable participants, all lecturers for this program, uh, Pagatot, Bu Anggi, and also Bu Margi, we invite at least five lecturers from each department. Uh, UPI has about 161 departments or study program, and uh, we do hope that these five uh, lecturers from each department will represent this, you know, uh, dissemination of information on international uh, program. Uh, one of the focus of UPI in developing international organization is we are going to develop uh, one of our strength uh, aspect is uh, Sundanology because UPI is located in West Java in the Sundanese area. So that is our specialization in internalization. So that's our distinctive feature. So we will be focusing on how to develop everything related to Sundanology. So it can be music, it can be language, it can be culture, it can be science, so science or engineering, but which is based on the culture of Sunda, which is located in West Java. So that's one of our distinctive features. So we will work together with all departments, study program in, you know, supporting and sustaining this program of international science. So once again, on behalf of university, I would like to thank the honorable speakers, Dr. Gato Suprianto, Dr. Uh, Tri Angraini Prajnawati, and also Dr. Margi Thomas for your time. I know this is the weekend, so everyone may say why we have this program in the weekend, but this is, I think, one of the best uh, 
deal and negotiation because some like some speakers are also busy in their activities and also the lecturers also busy during the weekdays. I, I do hope and I apologize if still for the participants for the lectures if this you know a bit spoil your weekend with your family. So once again, on behalf of the university, I would like to officially open this program with the saying of Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I do hope that this program today will run smoothly. From the beginning, we don't have any technological glitches or you know, uh, internet, internet connection problem during the program. Once again, thank you very much and have a nice and fruitful webinar. Thank you and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Fabu, that is very correct. Sometimes the weekend is the best timing to have a webinar series like this due to the very hectic schedule of our lecturers. Well, once again, Fabu, thank you so much for the speech. Thank you so much for officially opening today's agenda. And thank you so much for a little bit being nostalgic. I mean, that's all right. That's okay once in a while, right? Ladies and gentlemen, now that the event has been officially open, it's time for us to have the main agenda. We are going to have, we're having three speakers. And the first speaker is going to be Mas Gatot Suprianto. But first, allow me to briefly introduce him to you. Dr. Gatot Suprianto is an accountant with a passion for higher education. Currently, he serves as the Dean of Faculty of Economics and Communication, FEC, the home of eight strong study programs with more than 6,000 active students and over 150 faculty members. The programs include accounting and finance, communications and hospitality and tourism across five dif different campuses in Greater Jakarta and Malang. He started his career in BINUS as a subject content coordinator in 2008 and became the head of department in accounting and head of program international accounting finance program before being appointed as the dean of FEC in 2018. As a holder of triple accounting certifications, chartered accountant CA from Indonesia, certified practicing accountant CPA from Australia, and certified fraud examiner CFE from the United States, Mas Gatot also received two Australia award scholarships for his postgraduate studies to do a master and PhD programs in Monash University, Australia. He was awarded the highest achieving graduate award during his master's study from Monash University. Currently, he also serves as a consultant for fiscal policy agency, Ministry of Finance concerning tax potential and policies in Indonesia. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me in giving the warmest welcome to Pak Gatot Suprianto. Terima kasih, Pak Ubat. Uh, suara saya terdengar dengan jelas? Terdengar jelas. Okay. Alhamdulillah ya. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, Ubat, uh, mohon izin sedikit nostalgic tadi ya. Jadi terima kasih nih Pak Habuk. Uh, selaku senior saya di Monas University juga teman lah ya kalau ke Masjid West Hall di Melbourne tapi biasanya beliau ini jadi imam dan khotib kalau saya jaga parkiran aja pak nah, gitu <laughs> uh, dan yang penting lagi bagi bapak ibu sekalian di Pak luar biasa bahwa uh, di hari Sabtu terlebih tanggal 12 12 ini Harbolnas Harbolnas tetap semangat Waduh, untuk berbinar luar, luar biasa nih komitmennya untuk belajar <laughs> untuk berdiskusi uh, Bapak Ibu sekalian sesuai dengan arahan panitia saya izin menggunakan bahasa Inggris dalam penyampaiannya sejujurnya uh, walaupun kalau ngomong bahasa Inggris Pak Ubat biasanya mikir dulu baru ngomong nah itu bagus tuh ya kalau ngomong bahasa Indonesia, ngomong dulu baru mikir. Nah, jadi pakai bahasa Inggris, I think that will be much better. Oke, okay, so, monggo. Uh, please allow me to share uh, my uh, presentation on the slide. Um, it's a very short slide. I also um, already share uh, the slide to, to, to the committee. So, Bapak and Ibu, later on, if you want to uh, further read my presentation, you can get it from the committee. Um, according to the topic, um, Pak Ubat, just make sure my time will be around 30 to 45 minutes, right? Because yes, yes. As usual, lecturers, you know, like to talk a lot until <laughs> they recognize that the student already gone, yeah, or they already, you know, uh, 
make the video off in some of Zoom. All right, I'll be your timekeeper. <laughs> okay, thank you, Paul. But you so, uh, the main uh, the main topic for our discussion today is sharing the best practices in international class instruction. Um, I uh, will uh, talk about Guinness University. Um, so this is my agenda. Um, uh, in some of the things that I want to discuss with Papa and Ibu today. Um, so brief introduction about Guinness University. Thank you, Pa uh, Abu, for the wonderful introduction. It is a great honor for us yeah, as a private university, um, especially me being invited to um, um, a very uh, prestigious institution such as UP uh, to um, you know share what we have experienced and what we have achieved so far. So I'm going to briefly discuss um, or introduce uh, Greenwich University to Bapak and Ibu. Then later on, I will quickly discuss about the different types of inter international class in Venus. So uh, because if you talk about international class delivery in English, so it can be briefly uh, divided into three different categories, regular class, global class, or our full-fledged international program, we call it as Venus International. And then specifically on those three different parts, I also will discuss about um, quickly teaching and learning strategies uh, that we usually um, conducted or that we usually deliver in managing those three different classes. This is very important because the lecturer also have to understand their audience. Um, the students also understand what uh, actually the expectation that we place on them. Uh, I also like to discuss um, uh, the support system uh, that business provide um, for the international class uh, and hopefully this will be um, quite a good um, you know uh, introduction or information to um, team in UP as well. Last but not least um, I think this is a very good opportunity for us to uh, also share um, what we have experienced um, in managing the situation concerning COVID-19 the changes in student preference uh, in some of the learning mode and also uh, the rise of digital content. Yeah? Um, so hopefully I can share one thing or two regarding this specific or very interesting development on what happened around us. Um, let's uh, have a look, Papa Ibu, in the context of uh, Venus University. Um, first, uh, we are multi-campuses. Um, so in some of in uh, Jakarta, we have um, our uh, main campus, actually the first campus in Venus Tahdan. It looks like as they impress, it looks like a very old school, but we, we don't want to change that because that's part of our history yes, on the top left, Venus Tahdan. We also have Venus Kijang, that's the same in Kemanggisan, and we have um, quite a bigger campus uh, still in Jakarta, it's Venus Andre. Um, we also have Bermitri, um, we call it as Venus Square, and uh, we also have um, Venus Bekasi campus. Um, uh, that's part of the Greater Jakarta campus. Uh, our main campus, which uh, the biggest one, is in Venus Alam Sutra. Um, so that's definitely in Banten. So we have three uh, different campuses in Jakarta, Banten, and uh, West Java. Um, and the one that I want to highlight in terms of the discussion of Venus International is Venus Senayan, because this is a dedicated campus and dedicated um, location where the students specifically place into experiencing uh, the uh, international uh, situation in Venus. So it looks like um, a very separate campus because in terms of vibes, in, in terms of feeling, in terms of the um, environment that's completely different compared to the other part of the campuses in Venus. We also have domestic campus for the regional campus, PSDKU. Um, it is in Venus Bandung uh, and also Venus Malang. Um, and one of my faculty, uh, sorry, one of my program is also available in Venus Malang, communication um, in Venus International. Um, we have finance and also communication in Venus International and um, accounting and finance and also tourism and hotel management uh, in Venus Regular Campus. So that's pretty much um, in, in general uh, discussion about uh, multi-site campus and where usually the Venus International uh, we are focusing at. Uh, next point of next point of discussion is on how we uh, develop um, our international classes. Um, so first, uh, in Venus, uh, because uh, um, like ninety percent of our textbook 
um, are in English, except for certain textbooks that are related to uh, mata kuliah um, um, in Indonesia. Uh, character building, for example, taxation, for example, that kind of text will be in Bahasa. But other texts are in English. Um, but in delivery, uh, we can divide it into three main classes. The first one is basically regular class. Uh, meaning this is undergraduate degree. Uh, they are coming to the um, uni. They are coming to Venus to get uh, a normal degree, and not international degree. But because we understand um, in terms of the objective of Venus, we want to uh, be a world class university as well as to push our student in terms of um, a graduate. Uh, uh, when they graduate, they want to be. Uh, they want to work in a global institution as well as to be entrepreneur. So we also have some classes that are delivered in English. We call it as DINE, uh, delivered in English. So with this specific class, so basically this is regular student, but we teach the class in English. So you can imagine this class is basically uh, consists of students with various English skills uh, because they are also coming from different backgrounds in terms of standard high school all over Indonesia. Um, in terms of lecture requirements, um, we don't have specific um, requirement in English skill as long as they pass certain tests and also certain training they can teach uh, in the class that constitute as delivery in English. Why do, wanna, why do we want to have this specific class even though this is regular class? Why we don't deliver uh, the instruction in Bahasa for example? Number one is we want to expose our students with English teaching environment um, and I uh, want to introduce them to the world class standard in terms of feeling, learning, all in English. Uh, we also uh, understand that somehow, um, because our international campus in Senayan um, have a quite limited space uh, in terms of the capacity. So some, uh, some inbound students, some exchange or study abroad students, um, usually cannot be allocated into our international program. So they have to come to our regular programming. Um, if that is the case, it will be we have to prepare a special class that is already delivered in English. So that's why uh, we have this regular class, but deliver in English. Uh, the second uh, class, um, we call it a global class. This global class is dedicated program um, um, for the um, S1 regular and the graduate program. But it is by invitation. We invite students with very uh, good academic record, a very high um, English score to attend uh, our global class. Mind you that this global class is uh, in a limited program, so we're going to open all uh, program under global class. Currently, we have, for example, computer science, information system, we have accounting, um, and also have international relations and international business and marketing. So it's very limited uh, global class. Uh, what uh, different of the global class compared to regular class? Uh, all uh, program are delivered in English, um, and they have at least one semester mandatory study abroad. So they have to go for study abroad in the context of our enrichment program. Um, but the difference with international program, this program only offer single degree, which is local degree from Venus. Um, and to join, the student have to meet certain English standards. And for the lecturer, the requirement is a bit higher compared to the uh, uh, lecturer who will teach in the dine or in the regular class. So under global class, usually uh, there are some certain requirements with minimum TOEFL score, minimal, minimum IELTS score, and they have to pass uh, certain uh, training um, from business. So they will be eligible to teach in global class. Now, last but not least, uh, this is our full-fledged um, uh, international program. We call it as Venus International Program. As I mentioned earlier, this uh, campus is in Senayan campus, dedicated location, and the vibe is completely different. Why? Uh, because they like they have that their, their, their own country. They have like separate rules and regulation. They have um, separate standard compared to Venus uh, regular class and global class. Um, in terms of the program that we open or that we offer in this business international program, currently we have seven. Uh, we have finance, uh, we have international business and marketing, we have, uh, we have international business, we have international marketing, 
we have communication, we have uh, computer science, information system, and also design, uh, school of design. So we have seven um, different international programs. What is the difference uh, with this international program with the global class, for example? You probably may ask that question. The main difference is that under the business international program, uh, we only offer students uh, for the double degree programs, meaning that um, they have to graduate with double degree. One from BINUS, the other one uh, coming from our university partner. Um, what about uh, the price, for example, uh, or what about the partner choice? It, it's all uh, depend on the student, so they can choose, for example, four plus zero, uh, meaning that all four years conducted in Indonesia, uh, but they will get double degree program. Uh, in this case, the lecturer from um, our university partner will come to Indonesia to teach, and uh, we have to satisfy the criteria from our university partner. So four plus zero, we call it. We also have three plus one, three years in Indonesia and one year in our university partner in order to get a double degree program. And last but not least, we also have two plus two program, which is they will spend two years in Indonesia and two years in our university partner to get uh, the university partner degree. How about the uh, lecturer requirement? This one is very strict. For example, the one that can teach um, in this uh, BINUS international program, uh, has to score a minimum IELTS of 6.5. They have to be graduated from abroad, uh, so they cannot have uh, only local degree. Um, we also have uh, some international faculty uh, um, uh, that basically uh, expatriates coming to Venus, uh, when, or if they do not have a degree um, from abroad, uh, they have uh, previously worked for international firm or international organization, then they will be eligible to teach in the international program. So that's uh, the general uh, flavor of, of what the uh, different classes in BINUS is. I want to extend the discussion on the BINUS International um, on 4 plus 0, 3 plus 1, or 2 plus 2 discussion. For example, uh, when we talk about the uh, 4 plus 0, uh, this is the program that we offer um, with uh, University of Newcastle, Australia. That's for um, international business, international marketing and finance. And we also have a collaboration with Northumbria University of Newcastle, but this one in UK. Uh, that's for fashion uh, program. Uh, for those who want to uh, take 3 plus 1, we offer different choice for them to go. Um, so for um, uh, business, business, business school in the undergraduate program and finance, they can go to TBS to, uh, TBS to Cologne, they can go to Australia, QUT, they can go to Saxion uh, in France, they can go to Bournemouth, they can go to um, Edinburgh, for example. So as long as they can, uh, they already done their um, three years program in Vienna, so they can go for one year program um, in our university partner. That uh, also happened for ICNIS, so FOCM is Faculty of Computer and Media, and also for design. So they have quite a flexible choice where they want to go, as long as they go for the university partner and they should get the uh, double degree. Uh, the next one is 2 plus 2. This one is also quite popular. Uh, why quite popular? Because um, the offer also very interesting. For example, we have UNSW. So they can spend two years in Indonesia and two years in um, UNSW Australia or um, in University uh, of Wellington in uh, Victoria uh, um, in New Zealand. This is, all, uh, this is also popular for finance students because uh, Victoria University of Wellington is uh, also considered a triple crown um, in, business, in business sense, business accreditation. They get accredited by uh, ACSB. Um, EMBA and also ACWIS. So that's quite popular with our uh, students. So that's uh, the choice uh, provided to the student uh, if they want to go to extend their experience um, um, with our university partner. Now uh, we discuss about the uh, practice or what we experience um, in the class in some of international um, instruction. Yeah? teaching and learning strategies. Uh, this is what I observe because I uh, basically teach different uh, across uh, those three different classes. So this is basically based on my um, observation. 
Uh, number one is teaching and learning strategy when we teach in a regular class, but the delivery is in English. So you can imagine we are dealing with students come from various backgrounds. They can come outside Jakarta. Um, they can come from Indiana, from Bangka Belitung, Palembang, um, Surabaya, but they can also come from Jakarta. Um, uh, so we have we, we, we have to deal with different um, uh, uh, English skills. Um, unfortunately, because of those different uh, background and English skill, so we have to make certain adjustment in English delivery. For example, we can I cannot, for example, full explain the discussion in English because it's just too tough for them. Uh, for some students, sorry, for some students it's just too tough. Why it's so tough? Because they cannot follow my discussion, and they cannot follow my instructions. They even struggle with some basic English explanation. So sometimes I have to pause uh, my discussion and I would say that, okay, let's stop here. And I change in Bahasa. Okay, then I explain in Bahasa. So once I explain in Bahasa, they say, now I know, Pa. Okay, we can continue. Okay, then I move on and change my language in introduction into English. So we can we can do that, yeah, to some extent, even though, for example, we have one or two international students in the class. Yeah, I also experience like that. Students from France, students from Korea, for example, sit in my class, in the regular class. But I but I say to them my apology because some of the students struggle with my explanation in English, so I have to explain in Bahasa. And they say, okay, that's fine. So I explain it in Bahasa. So the teaching pace is a bit slower, and because they they uh, the teaching is a bit uh, uh, the pace is a bit slower, and they come from various background. I cannot really put a Western style teaching method. Um, so I have to do in a more traditional way, in a seminar way. So I have to explain things in much more detail. I cannot have more interaction and engagement with them. So that's what happens in regular class. Uh, with that in mind, obviously, the lecturer who deal with this class also have to adjust their expectation and also have to adjust their strategy. Number two, with a global class, because accounting program also have a global class. So I also experience teaching that the type of, this type, that type of class. We have full English um, in some of the teaching. Um, and the students are coming from national class. Uh, school or international school. So you can imagine this is uh, in terms of background, this is uh, uh, quite um, quite um, high quality in some of the background and in their English skill. So some students may still struggle uh, in their English, especially in writing, but in terms of discussion in the class or understanding the verbal discussion from the lecturer, uh, not so much. So, so we can discuss actively in the class. And I can adapt different teaching methods with more interactive and also project-based learning. So for example, I give them project, I let them to discuss with their peers, and then they present it. So uh, they basically do not have that problem because they have the mentality. They also do not have problem in learning the textbook in English. So it's much easier. So I can, you know, uh, teach this class uh, with a fast pace uh, in terms of the style in teaching this specific class, global class. What about the third one? Um, the Binus University International. Uh, like I said earlier, this is the uh, uh, this is a full-fledged international program. So students coming from international school or probably their home learning. So the English are very good, um, even better in terms of pronunciation compared than me. Um, so some are expatriates, for example, uh, Korean, Indian, uh, Chinese, um, uh, who their parents actually working in Indonesia. So they they enroll uh, their kids in in business international. Or we also have full-time international students. By chance, they're coming uh, uh, to, uh, by getting our scholarship or uh, because uh, they're coming to our class in collaboration or they, 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 they know the information from our partner. So they, they choose to go to uh, Indonesia. In this class, it's very nice because we have uh, more interactive and engaging sessions because this student is more independent. This is, uh, they don't have any problem in English. Uh, they're ready for the discussion and they don't like seminar or traditional method in teaching. So we can involve a lot of project and group learning in this specific uh, typical of class. Uh, because we have different uh, background of the student in terms of nationality, the lecturer also have to be aware with uh, the issue of culture and so forth. But like I said earlier, because most of the lecturer who are eligible for this program 
uh, graduated from study, uh, graduated from abroad, uh, from abroad. So they 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 basically have this understanding. So so uh, they, we don't have much problem um, in dealing with students in the specific background. So that's in terms of teaching and learning strategy uh, on those three different types of classes that we have in BIM. Next, I would like to discuss the support system that we provide for our students and our lecturer in a very quick discussion. Um, number one, for students, we provide them with English language service. For the English language service, or all, all the um, uh, staff are foreigners. Um, um, so, so they are um, either the Philippines, British, or American. So they provide with uh, giving broad training, tutorial, tutorial, academic writing, um, and and um, some some academic skill in writing usually, and we also offer the service of plagiarism checks to make sure that they they have that academic integrity um, in terms of submitting their work in English. We also have student support service. Uh, 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 mind you that earlier we have full international students that we also have to provide them with um, support in terms of accommodation, visa arrangement, and issues if they have, their, have their, uh, any problem with their um, insurance, health check, and so on. So we have the student support in, of, of service in place. And we also have international office. Uh, the international office under uh, BIMIS Global, so probably uh, just like uh, in UPI uh, right now have, uh, under JIAA, uh, Director of International Affairs, we call it as BIMIS Global, yeah. Um, this specifically dealing with um, um, student or lecturer uh, for study abroad and also for inbound and outbound students. Uh, next about the lecturer. Um, for the lecturer, we are lucky that we have specific directorate. Uh, we call it as BIMIS Corporate Learning Directorate. Uh, so this one, uh, uh, this directorate or this uh, unit dedicated for um, assessing and training the lecturer to be able and eligible to teach in international environment. So at the beginning, we have some assessment and what, uh, on which area that we are weak, uh, weak um, especially in pedagogical methods. So, and after that, we get certain training and we have to pass that training, uh, have to pass that certification to be eligible to teach, for example, certain class, uh, certain international class in BIM. We also have language center. Uh, this is to enable our, our, our lecturer, uh, especially, to you know, improve their uh, skill in English or passing some of the uh, uh, English test, for example. Last but not least, this one is uh, uh, I will discuss in more detail in, in later part. Um, uh, we also have a lot of support in terms of digital content. Um, we have business interactive software. If I have time, I will show you um, um, the example on how we produce in, uh, in the more business interactive software and also uh, mini studio for Bino. Yeah, this one in the picture is B-Box. Uh, mini studio meaning that if you want to create digital content, video-based learning, uh, we just book the studio, we just come inside and we just spend about one, two hours to prepare our digital content, our video-based learning to be used in the class. So that support that we provided to make um, in a successful process in some of the LSPD model. Second part, uh, of my discussion, um, uh, earlier part is more on the uh, on how we deal with international um, class. Uh, the later part is uh, probably I would like to share our response uh, or our adjustment towards the situation that we have in terms of COVID-19. Um, we aware that now we have to conduct a lot of uh, uh, you know, online learning and also how we deal with the changing uh, preference of uh, of students uh, when they when they, they try to learn, for example, from home. Uh, as we know, uh, the changing preference is they want to learn through video a lot. Um, they usually uh, want to learn in a short uh, in a shorter time period, uh, in a chunking method rather than in a very long course. So we have to deal with uh, a new preference of the student like this. And last but not least, also the rest of digital content. So this is an example on how we uh, deal with the uh, model that we have. Um, I think this is a very generic model when we have pre-class activity, in-class activity, and post-class activity. Um, in pre-class activity, uh, mind you that students usually uh, have to be prepared, um, uh, you know, from some material before they come to the class, and uh, we prepare them in our um, um, we call it a learning management system before it begins Maya. 
um, we can put some of the exercise question, quiz question beforehand, and we also like to share lecture notes, PowerPoint slides beforehand. So they are ready before they come into the class. Or uh, by, by chance, um, uh, depend on the lecture creativity, we can, um, we can have free class activity from Kahoot or through Google Form. So that's up to the, to the, to the lecturer. Um, the next one in class activity, we call it as multi-channel learning because we have a, a, a channel of learning not only one way, for example, only video conference through Zoom. We also have discussion forum. We also have learning from Venus TV. If you have any chance, you can go to, um, uh, to the website of Venus TV, www.venus.tv. That also under my unit in Faculty of Economics and Communication. That basically the lab, uh, the laboratory for mass communication program. But we make Venus TV engage in our learning experience, whereby, for example, a very good lecturer have a seminar, uh, a guest lecturer, a prominent guest lecturer. Uh, we can have live streaming uh, with multi-camera aired by Venus TV, for example, because they have the skill on deal with um, a live recording or live session. So we can air the, the, uh, the teaching from Venus TV. Uh, we also have video conference, we have slides, uh, video-based learning and digital content through our in-class activity. So not all of the classes is on Zoom. So we also, uh, we basically limit um, our Zoom conference um, like seven or eight out of 13 patients. The rest, usually we have uh, through discussion forum, through uh, video based learning or digital content. Again, we, want, we don't want to create more pressure to the students, especially during the pandemic. Uh, it's just too tiring for them to deal with Zoom a lot. Um, that's in class activity, whereby post class activity, we usually have um, assignment, post quiz, a recorded lecture or video later on. So, this is the approach that we, um, that, that, that we have uh, when we try to combine with different technological uh, uh, methods such as Kahoot, Socrates, Pool Everywhere, and so on. So, this is how we deal with our multi channel learning. Um, and I think this is the summary, or this is my, my example that I usually apply in my class using Socrative, Kahoot, Pool Everywhere, and Google Form, and the characteristic that will be useful for the lecturer. This is all free stuff, um, uh, even though with some limitation, for example, Pool Everywhere limited to 40 participants, Kahoot challenge mode uh, limited with uh, 50 students and so on. But this is very good to make our multi-channel learning more interactive. And last but not least, this is also uh, how we can still use PowerPoint slides uh, to be an interactive learning method during our multi-channel learning. Um, I think that's pretty much uh, my discussion um, in terms of how we use our teaching and learning strategy in different classes, different international classes in Venus, and how our multi-channel learning uh, are applied in Venus University. Uh, before I conclude my presentation, I would like to show you a little bit uh, an example of um, uh, our digital content or um, the example of um, our BIP system that we implemented in the class. So this is an example of uh, uh, digital content that we have. Um, I would like to play it, for example. So this is prepared by the lecturer um, uh, on how they uh, deliver the information about early learning system, for example. Uh, the link will be given to the student and the student will learn about the material and topic. Uh, they can continue on their own um, based on the digital content provided by us. And at the end, for example, in the digital content, we will provide them with assessment where students can learn and can assess their understanding on the topic that I uh, already discussed, for example. Um, and this BIT system um, is the one that can be accessed through online. So it can be used for us anywhere. So this is very useful uh, when the pandemic situation happens because we can still work uh, at home and dealing uh, with the digital content that we can prepare for our students. Um, this is an example. Uh, I can just can uh, log in with our um, uh, with my credential, then I can prepare my uh, digital content learning system, so I can help and you know provide different feeling uh, to the student to develop the content. So this is developed by Venus. Uh, so uh, I can I can develop and provide it my own. This is 
an example when I try to prepare my own digital content. Um, this is also an example of B box I, I saw you earlier. Um, if they are in the in campus, whilst they're waiting from uh, to go from one class to another class, they can go to the uh, uh, to the mini studio to prepare a recording for their own digital content. For example, we call it as B box here. Uh, I just want to show you the uh, tutorial quick. If you don't mind, about two minutes. Um, yeah. Lecturers sudah tahu kan sekarang Binus punya studio mini. Fungsinya untuk membantu lecturers dalam membuat video pembelajaran secara mandiri. Rencananya studio mini akan disebar di setiap kampus Binus Higher Education. Diharapkan. Hadirnya studio mini akan meningkatkan konten video-based learning yang dihasilkan oleh Binus. Sebelum memulai, yuk kita intip perangkat apa saja yang ada di dalam mini studio box Binus. Notebook, mouse, webcam, microphone, pen tablet, ring light, scanner untuk memindai dokumen, USB hub. Saat akan memulai membuat konten, pastikan notebook menyala, dan semua kabel sudah terhubung dengan USB Hub. Kemudian, nyalakan ring light. Atur pencahayaan dengan baik. Di studio ini, lecturers dapat membuat video presentasi dan screen recording menggunakan aplikasi Ink2Go atau QuickTime. Pen tablet dapat digunakan untuk membuat catatan, menulis rumus, atau memberikan highlight pada materi. Untuk keperluan editing video, lecturers bisa menggunakan aplikasi iMovie atau OpenShot, sedangkan editing gambar menggunakan aplikasi GIMP. Nah, demikian tadi penjelasan singkat tentang Mini Studio Box. Semoga membantu lecturers dalam membuat konten video best learning. Salam fostering and empowering! Okay, so that's uh, the example of our uh, mini studio. In short, jokes aside, uh, this is the way to make a lecturer to be a new YouTuber, Pak uh, Ubat and Pak Abu. Yeah? So can, we can be a, a new YouTuber later on. Thank you. That's all. Uh, we will come uh, pretty much uh, discussion and further questions from Bapak Ibu. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Mas Gatot. Everybody, let's give a big round of applause for the great uh, presentation of Mas Gatot. Uh, yeah, from, from the beginning of your explanation about the B-Box, the mini studio, it got my attention. <laughs> yeah, ladies and gentlemen, um, the Q&A session, the discussion session will be commenced after all the speakers finish their presentation. So we're going to move on to the second speaker. Oh, but before that, uh, I'm going to uh, request all the participants to turn on the camera because we're going to have a photo session for administrative purpose. So please kindly turn on your camera. All right, I'm going to start with page one. Everybody, yeah, look at the camera and smile on my count. Three, two, one, smile. All right. And now the next page, uh, I'm going to take four times. I'm going to take your picture. Okay, the next page, smile to the camera in three, two, one. Thank you. Two more times. Yeah, page three. Three, two, one, smile. And last but not least, page four. Three, two, one. All right. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the second speaker is from Uda Udayana University. But first, allow me to introduce her to you. 
Her full name is Ibutri Anggraini Prajnawardi from School of Architecture, Faculty of Engineering, Udayana University, Bali, Indonesia. She earned her bachelor's degree in architecture from the University of Udayana, Bali, and she earned her master in architecture from Institut Teknologi 10 November, East Java, and she earned her master in urban and regional planning from University of South Australia and her PhD in urban and regional planning from University of South Australia. She has made several publications, some of which are an, in, an investigation of spatial arrangement, form and structural system of traditional houses in Padawa Indigenous Village, Bali, uh, published in Matek Web of Conference, and form and construction system of Balinese indigenous house, case study Tigawasa village, Bulelang Regency, Bali, um, published in JCABE journal by LPPM Universitas Udayana. She has also been presenting in several conferences and some of her most current research projects are from and characteristics of Chempaga houses in Bulang Regency and also forms and construction system of traditional houses in Bali Aga village, case study of Desa Tigawasa in 2018 and 2017. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me in giving the warmest welcome to Ibu Anggi. Thank you, Pak Jeb uh, uh, Ubad for the time. So um, now I would like to share my uh, PowerPoint. Yes, please. Uh, Wait a second. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's on. It's on? Okay. It's on. <laughs> Just uh, would like to make it slideshow. Yeah. So everybody can hear me clear? Yeah, loud and clear, Ibu. Okay. Thank you. Also, thank you, Pak Ahmad, for inviting me to uh, give a presentation today. And Pak Gatot, who already gave a really great presentation. Uh, and also, under speaker, Ibu Margi, salam kenal. Uh, today, I would like uh, to uh, deliver a topic like share best practice in international program. But I'm going to more focus on uh, the Department of Architecture in Faculty of Engineering. Because um, I would like to share uh, what we have done so far, and I, I will give a glance about what what the all program in University of Udayana as well. So uh, here I would like to talk in three part. First part is the international program of uh, University of Udayana, and then the credit system, the learning semester plan, and also course example and then uh, the excursion uh, during the program and also marking and assessment. And part two, it is more to like uh, more welcome the student, welcoming the student and also how the student orientation are going on so far. And also the last part is the graduation. And the part three is uh, how to deal with student and how to deal with agents because this uh, the part three also very important uh, based from our experience in Udayana there's so many uh, like um, thing you know, like happen like how we deal with student and also with agent who uh, have the uh, what is it have the collaboration with us so international program at University Udayana currently we have seven program running yeah, like uh, the, the name is uh, ISBN, BIPAS, BIPA, GoBali, Tropical Engineering, Upskill, and UISP. So this all seven program is run by six faculties in Udayana. So in uh, Faculty of Cultural Studies, uh, Faculty of Economic, Faculty of Tourism, Faculty of uh, Engineering, 
and also marine and uh, fishery, uh, math and natural science, uh, and also medical. So this is uh, several, uh, the seven program, which is uh, uh, currently running, but due to COVID-19, uh, only uh, BPAS uh, is running with online program and uh, tropical engineering, we, 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 we not running the uh, course at the moment because the student, uh, there's few student, about 45 students already registered, but then uh, they don't uh, want to do the online uh, course. They would like to come to Bali as everybody knows, like uh, Bali have, you know, like kind of attraction for, for, uh, for foreigners, especially for student, international student to come. So they not just want to study, but they also want to enjoy Bali and also like have a, a study and vacation at the same time. So uh, as I mentioned before, yeah. So basically we have a uh, one semester program, short courses, uh, short course programs and online short, uh, course program. As I mentioned, due to COVID-19, like the pass and new program, just new problem, I mean, sorry, program uh, just uh, finished uh, called Surabali. We have collaboration with Petra University and Airlangga University Surabaya. So this is a, a, a short course program uh, run by three university. As you can see from the pictures, like we give uh, uh, an online video and also we give an online lecture and we held the discussion do, using the platform, uh, online platform that we have in Udayana University called OASA, quite uh, the same, similar with uh, what uh, Binus have. So all the videos, all the uh, study materials we uploaded to that system. So the, all the students from different a country can access that program who already registered with that program and uh, they can uh, submit their uh, assignment also uh, we can do the marking and they easily can see their grade and uh, everything related to that so uh, currently only two program online program that we have uh, BIPAS and Surabali, but the other program is, uh, is not running. But we, we do hope that uh, next year by February, if, uh, if it's possible or the condition is getting better, we're going to open uh, all the program. In uh, Udayana also now we already created more program. So it's uh, the new program. So this uh, from 15 faculties. Uh, as you can see, some of the example here, the Faculty of uh, Agriculture Technology, Mathematics and Natural Science. So there is several program, new program, uh, both uh, for uh, bachelor and also for master students and uh, one full semester and also a uh, short course, like uh, one month, three months short course. So this is uh, some new program that already uh, proposed. We are still uh, working on this, um, but this program is basically uh, offered uh, offline. It's like student come here and enjoy the environment of the university and doing uh, uh, all the lecture in Bali. And this is several um, some more, uh, faculty. That's the example of uh, the program from uh, Faculty of Marine and Fisheries, uh, Faculty of Tourism, Economy and Business, Animal Husbandry, Social and Political Science, Law, Medicine, and the postgraduate also Faculty of Medicine and uh, veterinary, agriculture, humanities, engineering, and postgraduate study as well. So in uh, engineering, we do have uh, currently uh, tropical engineering, they, we call it that. We have uh, architecture, civil, um, civil engineering, uh, international program, and uh, mechanical and electrical. So, at the moment, we also create two more uh, short course program 
for bachelor, we call it architecture documentation and uh, vernacular, and also for postgraduate um, uh, program, we call it tradition and architecture. So credit system. Uh, I would like to explain a bit because I'm not the expert of this, but what we have in tropical engineering is based on credit system, ECTS, which is European uh, credit uh, system, uh, credit transfer system, sorry, that's typo. So it's basically one ECTS is uh, equal to 25 to 30 hours of study. So about 10 classes uh, each uh, two and a half hours. So um, mostly our students are from Europe and, and uh, the proportion is the like 60% is uh, from Germany, some from Australia and other country in Europe and uh, like Russia as well. So uh, we uh, use the credit system based on ECTS. Okay, now I move to study guide. So um, I would like to share about what uh, the study guide you like an, an example, what thing that um, is important when you uh, create a study guide so for, for your international students. So it's, uh, it's simple, but it should be clear. So what is include uh, what to include there so is like, of, of course, the name of the course and then the credit, how you can uh, you know the credit that uh, that um, included there and then the preface, like uh, what kind of brief description and also table of content and the overview of the of the program, like uh, the course structure, uh, the course duration, the course aim, the course outline, and also facilitators with the photos of the all the lecturers and the email address and also mobile number. Because students really, really need this uh, kind of information, especially like uh, this, uh, like based on my experience, something happened, they can't uh, submit the uh, assignment or they can't attend the class uh, on time due to something. So they can easily uh, let the teachers, the, the lecturers know. We, we do have the office as well, the international office, but sometimes, uh, you know, like if they send messages or they send email, the, the staff will see uh, all the messages or all the email at the same times. Uh, but if the student can directly contact the lecturer, that will be much easier, uh, not only for the student, but for the lecturer as well. So also timetable and the semester learning plan. What uh, in one semester, uh, the breakdown of the lecturers and uh, uh, everything should be included in the semester learning plan. Uh, this is uh, like a timetable uh, uh, that we have for, for architecture. As you can see, uh, uh, it's explained the, the course, time, the, uh, the class, where the room numbers and sort of stuff, the team teaching, and also like the break time uh, in between the classes. Uh, what we have here in one semester, we have a lecture from Monday to Wednesday. And Thursday and Friday, we have excursion. I will explain about excursion later. So basically excursion uh, is uh, a supporting uh, activity of for uh, the subject, so each subject. So, uh, so the excursion it's uh, divided by two. It's compulsory and not compulsory. So, uh, in the next part, I would uh, talk about that. And next, this is one example of the course or subject example, which is uh, I taught this uh, uh, subject interior in architecture. 
So we have five credit, and then uh, this is the team teaching, and then the schedule, and then the room, and then the, we explain about the subject descript, uh, description and the learning objective of the subject. Oh, and then evaluation of a student learning process. So we have to be clear about the assessment and marking. So like uh, we already uh, told them that active participation, no less than 75% of attendance and the uh, uh, assignment also assign one, two, three, how the percentage and how the percentage of the exam. And also we have to uh, set uh, what the assignment is, uh, what the assignment are, I'm sorry. And then like, if we have three assignment, uh, because this uh, example is one semester and our students are from bachelor and also master degree. So uh, we have to differentiate between uh, the master and bachelor. So we can't give them the, the same assignment. So it's, we, we uh, make a difference between a master class and a master student and a bachelor student. Even though we, uh, in, uh, in practical, we, we, we teach them at the same, uh, what is it, at the same class. So, but they will have, um, more uh, like they will be different for for their uh, assignment. This is assignment two, and then assignment three, and also exam. So exam, uh, they have also to know in advance what the exam will be. Uh, the first uh, during a uh, day of the class, so lecturer. Uh, will explain everything about the learning uh, uh, plan or the semester plan. So they will be really clear about what they are going to do during one whole semester. And then uh, by the end, the weekly schedule, so breakdown of each week uh, schedule. And then like week one, who will be the lecturer because we work in a team in one, uh, one subject, uh, we have three different lecturers, except for studio because it's half uh, eight credit. Um, it has uh, six uh, different lectures. Uh, also, yeah, uh, make sure that when you have the, uh, to have, I mean, like student have to submit the uh, assignment. You have to be clear with the date and where to go and in what format, which is hard copy or soft copy, whether they have to hand it to the office or send it to email. This is uh, one example of the course subject. Uh, like you can see the lecturer, the topic, the method and learning competency, what you want the student to be able to learn after the uh, uh, the class, uh, the week one class, week two, week three, and and sort of until uh, the end of semester. So in here, we always uh, have a guest lecture. So guest lecture, usually we pick from an expert um, in interior, uh, if the subject is interior, if the subject in studio, usually we uh, pick a uh, one uh, architect who uh, well recognized architect who gives give, uh, guest lecture to our student. So we have uh, plenty uh, help yeah, from professional in Bali. Um, no matter the Indonesian or the American, they love to, to join our program. They love to help us to give, give uh, uh, guest lectures and also uh, very welcome us uh, to come to visit their office or their project. So this is one of our uh, strength because the student really loves to see uh, like what is tropical design. They don't want just to, to know the theory, but they would love to see how it looks. Uh, how to design from uh, from the drawing, how to build that. And that's really uh, give um, the student fully understanding about uh, tropical architecture or tropical design or tropical interior um, in Bali. 
And this is a uh, talk about excursion. I'm sorry, the timetable is so small. So the, the, the phone is so tiny. So we divided the excursion in the first semester. So week one, we're going to go to this place, this place, this place. So they basically will know about where to go during uh, for Friday or Thursday. Some, uh, mostly we do it in uh, Thursday. Uh, and only few in Friday. It's depend on the place that we want to visit because some places they, uh, they're already full book on Thursday. So we only have a chance to go on Friday. Kind of like that. So uh, this is, we have to prepare in the beginning. So when, when the semester start, we ha already have the uh, timetable for the excursion. Uh, as I mentioned before, that we have excursion a compulsory and not a compulsory. So, like uh, this is uh, for example of a compulsory um, um, excursion where the student has to make a report for what the experience um, or making a sketch and um, put uh, photos about the uh, what is it the site that they visit on the excursion. This is all related to the ex, uh, to the subject. Like you can see, like the first one, then Pasar City Tour. So it's related to the subject of South East Asia architecture. And the, the second object is Penglipuran and Taman Nusa is related to the subject tropical home. So they will see if uh, we will uh, we deliver the theory on the class and they will see uh, the real building during the excursion so the excursion is kind of supporting uh, the theory so gives students uh, the fully understanding about what they learn in the class excursion brief so this is one example of uh, how to make a uh, inform the student before the excursion start, like uh, where's the place and the map and what the meeting point and sort of stuff. So uh, we, 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 we deliver this, uh, we send this uh, a week before the excursion so they can prepare, they can search on Google where the place and sort of stuff. Some of the excursion, uh, if it's far away from Denpasar, we provide a bus so we can, uh, we can uh, meet up at the campus, uh, provide the bus and we can go together. But most of students love to go by their own with their motorbike. So after that, they can free to go wherever they want, explore Bali. This is a few examples of the excursion. On the top uh, left, we can see the uh, we're visiting a studio, uh, architecture studio of Popodanes. Um, and we have guest lecture as well on the bottom left. And we have a traditional workshop. Uh, as you can see, uh, they learn how to make uh, offerings uh, in Bali with the fruits, with the flowers and everything. They're really enjoying to doing this. And then we also have a bamboo uh, workshop, how to make a, a construction uh, from a bamboo, as you can see, the students uh, have their own design and they have a small um, bamboo and they learn how to create their uh, structure. And on the bottom as well, we see the bamboo building project. Um, this one of my friends is an Australian architect, Richard Monsters is really kind and he have lots of project of bamboo all over Indonesia and overseas as well. So. Uh, we are always welcome to see uh, uh, the construction site of his. And the right one, uh, bottom right, is uh, we're visiting an interior workshop, how to make interior element. Marking and assessment. 
yeah, I already mentioned before, like uh, this is one example. So as I mentioned that we using uh, in tropical engineering, uh, not other uh, program, because some of them have uh, a student from Australia, also from India, like medical school. Um, I'm not quite sure what kind of assessment that they use, but in tropical engineering, we have uh, like the grading system based on that German system. So we can see that the, from the from the rank of uh, the grade and the rank of numbers that we hear so we have uh, we use this um, as a module so also we have a remedial uh, one week if they would like to improve their grade we after uh, the uh, exam um, we uh, like three days after exam, we already uh, grade them and we inform the student. So if they are happy, they would they would uh, ask for any remedial, but if they're not happy, they will ask for remedial. So this is one example of the uh, exam that we have, uh, some of uh, like a uh, written one and the presentation that we have, the student um, have to design something and present it in front of the class in, uh, in the group. So uh the different method of exam that we have and part two uh would like to uh share about uh how like welcome ceremony for new student. Usually uh we uh this is one example of the uh invitation. Um we do it in Kuta so we uh give them the the first good impression, yeah. So uh, a welcome dinner for the student and also, yeah, just like normal like registration and then we welcome with balanced dance and also there's a games dinner and we chat and we talk uh, about many things. We get to know each other, like all the lecturer will come and all the new student come and also the staff. So we get to know each other easily share some experience about places, about where to live or where to stay or where place to visit. And also after that, we have entertainment and free time. Uh, this is uh, one example that's uh, during the registration and then we give them a uh, sarung uh, uh, for students. So because uh, if we visit some excursion places, which is temple, they have to have sarung, they have to use sarung. So, um, and also scarf or selendang, we call it uh, in, in Indonesia. And then uh, we, we provide them in the beginning. So whenever they are ready to go, for excursion, we have to mention in earlier, um, like in the in excursion brief that they have to bring their sarung, they have to bring their scarf as well. So that's the, the performance that after the after dinners, like a fire dance and any other dance that we show to the student. And student orientation. So here, student orientation, the day after, usually, uh, we held the uh, what is it welcome ceremony on uh, Saturday and Monday we have uh, student orientation. So this will be a registration, welcoming words from the uh, head of the program and from the dean and uh, being part of tropical engineering community. That's a that's a brief um, explanation from our. Uh, agent and our partners is like uh, the excursion place that we will visit and uh, what is the regulation and what can they do and not to do or something like that and with uh, also Udayana University representative and all agents and partner and then uh, welcome words from student representative of uh, the student new student and then a brief, the last one is a brief introduction of each tropical engineering program and courses. So each uh, course coordinator will explain what is the semester learning plan of each subject. So after that, uh, they will have uh, self exploration on campus and surrounding. This is one example of the student orientation. That, uh, uh, one of the our agent gives the brief explanation about the <clears throat> excursion, uh, the object of excursion, the, uh, what they are going to do there, and sort of stuff. And then uh, 
the last for this part is like certificate and offer and farewell. So this is the graduation of the student. Uh, we, uh, we also usually like um, uh, inform them if they would like to ask uh, their family member to come or their close friend or that's really welcome uh, to join the uh, ceremony, the graduation. So again, we do have registration, Balinese welcoming dance and words, speech from um, the dean and also student representative about what um, uh they have learned what's the experience what uh the good and bad thing <clears throat> they feel during studies in udayana so usually we will uh we will uh hear the really harness uh what is it uh, opinion or uh, and they usually uh, will give a feedback to us for the program this is kind of the part that uh, really good for us to uh, have a reflection of what the program and also uh, uh, a speech from our agent uh, about this program and also closing speech and refreshment here's some photos of the graduation uh, that we had uh, last year um, or part three Part three is deal with student. Like the first thing that uh, uh, always come up is complain. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, related with the assessment or grade or assignment. Uh, some uh, you just from my experience, um, uh, there is no different between local student or international student, they're all the same. They try to trick you also. They try to say, oh, I already submit the assignment, uh, but uh, why, uh, what is it in the mark? Is there is no mark for my assignment to you? That's an example, it's always happened like that. And then whenever uh, you have, uh, you ask her, them to prove, uh, give you the proof, or oh, if you already spent, if, uh, they send it through OASA, uh, our online platform. They can they cannot lie. But if they send it to our email, we have uh, to ask them to provide the proof that they already uh, uh, submit the assignment and also the grade. So uh, uh, so far, all of the complaint we can deal it with uh, kind of a really a good uh, face to face. Uh, discussion about what do you want and what is uh, what's the requirement of the uh, what is it um, as assignment and also we have to explain the reward and the punishment as well sorry I forgot to mention in the in the beginning that the reward and the punishment of the uh, uh, for the student if they handed um, before the due date, they're going to get extra of it. They handed a uh, pass the due date, they're going to get discount of the mark. So we have to explain it at the beginning of the semester. So they will aware. So it's minimize the, what is it, the, uh, what is it, the complaint, because we already clear uh, in the beginning. So uh, cheating as well. They cheat, uh, uh, like, uh, seeing their student, uh, other student, uh, what is it, answers or uh, asking uh, uh, other student to help them with the uh, assignment and sort of how it's happened. It's happened in international class. So don't think that in uh, international class, this kind of, uh, this type of things that happen, it's happened because they just see the same student. Usually uh, in studio, because uh, we already always observe the process of, of the student, of each student uh, in detail. So we know um, how um, the one student different with the other student. So if they cheat, um, uh, when they submit the assignment is different with the, the progress, that will be easy to track. 
So that's why we have uh, the method that each week in studio class, uh, they have to submit their progress. So we can see from the progress, uh, if the final result, uh, the final result or the final design of the student is way much better than the process. So we can easily track that. So uh, the student also more aware that it's, um, if they have to send the progress each week. So that will be a uh, minimize the cheating of a uh, student. Uh, and then punctuality uh, always late. And there's some of uh, students always happen in one semester that student come always late. There's always a reason like, uh, my uh, tires are flat and I, uh, my alarm uh, won't turn on, uh, my, my mobile phone is turned off, so I didn't hear my alarm and so many, uh, you know, excuses. But um, we have to be really, really sure to explain to them that if they late, uh, they can't uh, enter the class, uh, like, we give the, just the same with local student, uh, like let's say 10 minutes or 15 minutes more than that, you cannot enter the class and you consider it absent for this class. So do not hesitate to uh, tell them like that. So annoying behavior as well. So texting, talking, even sleeping during class, it's happened. Uh, one student said that, oh, I'm, I went for surfing last night until, until midnight, so I'm so sleepy, I'm so tired. There's so many excuses about that. But again, we create an activity in the class so they won't get boring. So usually what we've done is we create a game, we make games and also uh, ask them to present about a topic that we already uh, uh, sent a week before, so that makes students stay awake during the class. And uh, yeah, most of stuff is like games is really, uh, what is it, uh, they're really enjoying uh, that we playing the game during uh, giving the lecture. And also student feedback. Student feedback is really important. Every uh, by the end of semester, after the exam, we give them, a, a send them a form, a Google form usually, to uh, get feedback from them. What they, uh, what uh, can uh, we do to improve the program? Uh, so basically, they really, really honest. They really honest. They give. Uh, they just really open about everything. So uh, if it's good, they will say good, but if it's bad, they will say bad. So then we will learn from that what we can uh, improve for the next uh, semester. And deal with agent. This is uh, the last um, part. Yeah. Uh, discussion and negotiation. Based from our experience, there are so many problems that we face with the agent. Uh, we uh, collaborate with the agent, uh, like several different agents. Some of them, like, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, it's hard to approach. They sometimes they interfere so many things, like they want to, uh, what is this, the, arrange the excursion while we already set the excursion. Is uh, it? Kind of what that's one example, and also uh, what is it? They uh, get a complaint from student. The student not uh, telling us uh, about what the problem is, and they go uh, talk to the agent, and then we then have a tense between uh, Udayana, the tropical engineering, and the agent. But again, with the discussion and negotiation between uh, student. Uh, and lecturer and also the agent that will uh, be solved. Basically, uh, so far it's solved. And then uh, regular meeting we have uh, with the agent before, during, and after program. This is really important, especially uh, to minimize the, all the complaint uh, uh, from student and also uh, the problem that we have uh, in the fields, like uh, when we have excursion. So we have to fix uh, everything 
as 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 much as we can before the program and also during the program we evaluate uh, uh, if there is something goes wrong or what will be the uh, the next week uh, in the middle of semester and we also uh, what is it um, discuss about if there is uh, any changes of uh, uh, the guest lectures uh, the schedule of the guest lecture lecturer and also uh, the excursion sort of stuff. And also after the program, like we uh, try to, uh, to summarize if this program is run well, or if not, what was uh, happened and then try to fix it in the next semester. I think that's all from me. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I give the time back to Papa uh, Ubat. Thank you. Yeah, <clears throat> thank you so much, Ibu Anggi, ladies and gentlemen. Let's once again give a big round of applause to Ibu Anggi. Ibu Anggi, thank you so much for sharing with us in details the international programs in your university, especially the excursion. It feels like I'm having a brief virtual vacation when I was watching the uh, slideshows about the excursion. Well, um, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we've come to the last but definitely not the least speaker of the day and you can hold your questions or you can write down your question on the chat box and then we're going to have a discussion later after our third speaker finish her talk allow me to introduce her to you first um dr margaret thomas earned her bachelor's in biology or psychology at Manchester University, Hamilton, Ontario, with the thesis entitled Pragmatics in the, Interac in the Interactions of Attention Deficit Disorder Boys, a De Developmental Analysis, and her master's at School of Optometry, University of Waterloo, Ontario, with a thesis entitled Correlating Changes in Retinal Vessel Diameter and Electrophysiological Changes in Retinal in retinal function during an altered profession pressure and her PhD at Pharmacology University of Alberta, Edmonton, Alberta with a thesis entitled Pharmacological, Pharmacological Characteri Characterization of Cinematic Voltage Dependent Calcium Channels. Since 2014 to present, she has been a visiting lecturer at the Department of Science Education, Faculty of Mathematics and Science Education, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, with a, with a primary appointment to the International Program in Science Education, or as we call uh, IPSE or IPSE. Her responsibilities include teaching assignments within the study program, consultation on English editing for papers prepared by staff and faculty of uh, and the faculty members and consultant on other language and research issues in the faculty and also an English uh, proofreader for journal uh, of science um, learning. She has also made a lot of uh, publications, one of which is basic skills for the bio biomedical laboratory, a practical course, and um, also Time course of the flash response of dark and light adapted human from the electro uh, from the electronic program in Journal of Physiology, and uh, she is also she has also been assigned as the keynote speaker in 2019 at, at the sixth international conference on mathematics, science, and education with the topic "Open Education Opportunities Made Easier in the Oh." Are open education opportunities made easier in the industrial 4.0 era? So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join me in giving the warmest, the warmest welcome to Ibu Margi. Well, thank you, thank you very much, uh, and uh, welcome everyone to the webinar today. I'm happy to be able to share a few things on my experience in working alongside others in this international program in science education. I'll share my screen. So just give me a moment here to get this sorted out. Um, and uh, so the, the topic 
of our webinar today is sharing best practices in international class instruction. And um, my, I've been impressed to hear about the international programs shared by Pat Gatto and Ibu Suri already today. I think uh, we need to say, or we, we might be helpful to just remind us all that the IPSC program is one program, it's still quite small, in the Faculty of Maths and Sciences here at UP. And um, we don't currently have very, well, we have some students who have done their high school outside of Indonesia and then have come to Indonesia to take part in our program. But we don't have the same dynamic of so many and such a variety of international students as is clearly the case in both the, the programs at Vilnius uh, and at um, in the university in Ibu Sri's university. So just a bit of background. The IPSE program is, uh, is small, uh, but it's been going now for 10 years and um, it's got a, a desire to improve and develop and is, a, from my experience so far in Indonesia, is a context that's very open to, to trying new things. So I want to acknowledge my colleagues and faculty members, both in the IPSC program itself, but in the Faculty of Maths and Sciences more broadly as well. So sharing best practices, I uh, would like to focus a little bit more uh, today on COVID-19. I know that Pat Gatto also mentioned COVID-19 and how that has impacted or how they have adjusted in the context of COVID-19. Uh, but I do think that there's something in this experience that we've all had this past number of months that will be quite significant as we move forward, not only in international class instruction, but more generally for our education here in Indonesia. All right, uh, so let's see, and we can go on here. So some definitions to begin with. Uh, for best practices in education, I'm using a general definition that it's teaching methodologies that are effective in achieving the goals of the study program. Best practices are not something that, that is necessarily new and different. You know, if we are, are doing something, we have some method of teaching or some method of engaging with our students that is effective in helping our students learn and develop that can certainly be a best practice and there's no reason to think we need to change that. But we need to be evaluating what we're doing and be reflective on what we're doing. So that's probably the basic best practice is to, uh, is to reflect on, on what we're doing so we can answer the question, is this the most effective way? Um, I've already mentioned briefly on the uh, international class. And so I'm going to use uh, international class as a university course that in some way incorporates more than a national perspective into the learning experience. So again, unlike the examples that have already been presented today, where it's a full program and there's many students from overseas in the courses, the IPSC program has a few students who have studied overseas before beginning their university, but it's very much focused um, on Indonesian students at this point. Most of the graduates of the IPSE program are, will go on to be teachers at international schools here in Indonesia. And so the um, language of instruction is English, and we also try to introduce um, a broad range of models of how to teach. And finally, in terms of definitions, although I don't suppose anyone needs a whole lot of whoops, definition on this, my mistake. Um, 
करें Sorry, I've gotten a slight technical issue here. There we go. So uh, final definition, COVID-19, uh, a worldwide pandemic that has had and will continue to have really significant impacts on education. And I think we're all aware that the impacts are much broader than just on education. But I, I do believe that this COVID-19 um, experience that we continue to, uh, to work through, shall I say, uh, will be quite a significant um, marker, you know, as we look back that there will be a, a lot of change that comes as a consequence of COVID-19. All right, we're back on to our plan here. All right, so um, okay. Why is this? I'm sorry. Slide. I'm sure slide two. Next slide. I should be able to do this in different ways. Um, I'm getting it to go on one slot on one one page, but it's not advancing on this other page. Why would that be? There we go. Um, there we go. Uh, so my primary sources for these reflections, because mostly that's what it is, I'll be sharing just uh, on my experiences, uh, come from the uh, fact that I am Canadian and I'm working in Indonesia. And I have been in Indonesia for a number of years. And so I'm, I'm drawing experiences both from my time currently here in Indonesia, but before, pardon me, currently in Bandung, before I was in Bandung, I did work for a number of years in Medan at the University of North Sumatra, teaching in their um, biomedicine, ilmu biomedic program. But since 2015, I have been um, uh, assigned here at the Faculty of Arts of Maths and Sciences in the International Program on Science Education. Um, right, all right, pressing on. So in addition to my own experience, I have also found it really very helpful to have had um, an introduction. These are a couple of Canadian researchers in the whole area of education, uh, Stephen Downs, and um, the second one is Tony Bates. And both of these gentlemen have worked for years and years in the Canadian uh, higher education system. And I have found some of their reflections and some of their work to be very helpful uh, both uh, just really helpful generally in how to use technology in higher education and how to think about what it is we're trying to do uh, as lecturers and educators in, in the higher education context. So what happened before we came to this pandemic? I will explain what my uh, teaching experience within the IPSE program was like at that time. So we had face-to-face -face classes of 100 to 150 minutes per week. And the class size in the IPSE program is generally about 25 students. Most of the courses that I was teaching were courses related to English for academic purposes. Um, there's three of these courses in the whole program. Um, occasionally, I have also taught 
in uh, biology content courses in the program. Um, and usually, particularly for the English for academic purposes classes, because one, one thing that many of our students um, have not had a lot of experience with is the opportunity to talk with and engage with a native English speaker. And uh, for a variety of reasons, not least that I've been around for a long time, um, it has, has usually been possible that I have been able to arrange for someone to come in person to the class. And that allows the students to engage in a discussion. We've set up the discussion related to something that the students have been working on in class. And that has proved to be a, a useful activity and enjoyable one too. And in terms of our communication within the class, uh, of course, we meet face to face. So there's an obvious opportunity to communicate expectations and what's going on. But we have also used social media, uh, Line or WhatsApp or whatever social media the students are, are request has been what we've used. And I have also used the university LSM Spata or spot to some extent, but only actually only a little bit for some special reasons. But essentially, we're meeting face to face. So you have opportunity each week to communicate with the students in a straightforward way. So we're thinking of our course, we're, we're in the 21st century. And we've talked I'm sure, uh, not today, but I'm sure you have participated in webinars or have read articles about the significance of this, this new revolution into the everything being connected on the internet and um, the internet of things and so on and all this change that has come in the 21st century. And so there are some 21st century skills that our students need to develop and our educational system needs to, to train and support our students in developing. But at the same time, we're not, you know, we're still humans. We're not, we're not going entirely to the computer. And in fact, the human side of skills are becoming more and more important, right? So according, this is a, uh, this humans wanted is a, a report that came out again from Canada two years ago, looking at what kinds of resources, what not resources, what kinds of skills students need. And it came out, it became clear as they interviewed various businesses and stakeholders that some skills are in far greater demand than others. And the skills that are in great demand in the 21st century our skills of being able to listen in an active way, of speaking, communicating clearly, of critical thinking, of being able to understand material that you're reading. I mean, there's so much material now available because of course we have the internet and that opens um, uh, tremendous amounts of reading materials to us all. Other skills are still needed, but not in such a high demand. So skills I teach in the science department, I love science, but you know, teaching or, or skills of, of memorizing or knowing lots and lots of facts about our subject area are not as important now as perhaps it used to be because we have these other resources to quickly access facts. But what's important is that we can use those facts in um, effective ways through our listening and our, and our critical thinking. Programming skills are needed and technology design skills are certainly needed. So these skills are needed, but they're not maybe the most important skills that are needed. And so I'm just arguing today that it's important for us to recognize that maybe some of the skills that our students will need going forward are skills that are different than what we needed when we went through our own educational program, however long ago it was. And I have to say, uh, Ubad, when you read my CV and, and gave some background, 
I had not thought of the undergraduate thesis I had done probably for 20 years. So, um, <laughs> so, so, you know, and what I needed to do that thesis is much different than what students such a, would need such now. a good or bad reminder to you? Oh, no, it's just a fun reminder. We did, okay. we watched, we watched videos of, of, of boys interacting and trying to code what they were doing in their behavior. It was an interesting thing to do. But right. I haven't thought about it for a long time. <laughs> Okay, so we've got these 21st century skills that are needed. Uh, one common way, again, that I expect you've heard about are the four C's. Students need to be able to communicate and collaborate, critical thinking and have creativity. And I would suggest uh, also self-confidence uh, is something that is important that we uh, incorporate into the way we design our courses and our programs. Uh, I don't know, I'll say, especially for uh, Indonesian students who haven't had experience or very much experience yet uh, outside of the country. It can be very intimidating for, um, you know, the, the students to think, oh, no, I have to speak to this foreigner. Um, I won't be understood. I won't, you know, I won't know what they'll say and all these different things. It can be very intimidating if we can in these international programs again i have i'm i'm speaking from my experience which is very much teaching in a in an indonesian environment not so much with international students from outside of indonesia so confidence is an important uh, uh, element that we need to bear in mind all right um so we have these skills, we have how things were going along and everything was great. And then we had the pandemic. And suddenly, uh, you know, Tiba Tiba in March 2020, we are online. And the sudden change from 100% face to face on campus, you know, interacting in a certain kind of way, doing our lectures in a certain kind of way. We're suddenly being asked, okay, just move online and do everything online. So uh, immediately, you know, we all, I expect again, all of you had these experiences. You know, we suddenly had to learn how to use Zoom. Uh, maybe we started doing screencasting to record our lectures. Um, for myself, uh, I moved to use more Google Classroom as a kind of LSM where the classes that I was teaching and so much more communication on social media with the students. And this past little while we've been using WhatsApp more than anything else. So, um, so we're in the pandemic, the first semester, we, we just had to do it and we didn't have a lot of time to think or plan. And somehow we made it through, I think for the most point. But I expect that there's lots of experiences in all of the, the participants of our webinar today, you know, what you felt or what you did when you were suddenly faced with going online because of the pandemic. So that might be something you wish to talk about later. That, that would be fine. Uh, and then, the pandemic didn't go away. I think many of us thought, well, this will be something we'll have to deal with for maybe two months. You know, certainly it will be sorted again by uh, the next semester. But of course, that wasn't the case. And um, we were faced with, from the very beginning, being online. Now, uh, it was very good, at least I can speak for my experience here at UPI, and I would expect it would be the same at most other universities here in Indonesia. When it became clear that everything was going to be online for another semester, the leadership and the administrative staff of our institutions did put in a lot of effort to try and provide as much support as could, they could for uh, for the faculty and for the students in this new way of doing things. And so we had here at UPI, there was opportunities to take training on 
how to prepare uh, effective mini lectures online, how to organize your uh, study plan for online learning and so on. So we're grateful that there were such efforts. And we did have a little bit of time. But something that was new for the second semester was of course that we had first year students, students who hadn't had any university experience at all coming into the university setting and uh, everything is um, online. Um, so, uh, um, there we go. So I, that was my experience. I had one first year class. The second year class were the same students that I had had in, when the pandemic started. All right, and so then what else was new? I, from my experience in the latter half of the first semester, I decided that it would be really helpful to set up what I'm calling weekly chat, uh, chat times or class chats. I also, for my second year students, supplied a book that we would work through during the semester because they were all spread out across the country, really, and maybe not readily able to access such materials or this particular book. Certainly, we didn't have that, wasn't in our library. Um, and uh, yeah, the book uh, was a, a book for trainee teachers on understanding how we learn, talking about some of the um, cognitive psychology concepts as we should think about as teachers as we're preparing lessons and so on. And our class chat times, they were chats because it was a small group. I divided the class up into groups of between five to 10 students, depending on what our activity was. And that was within the regular schedule of class time uh, each week. I also decided that it would be worthwhile to up my hardware that I had were working at home. So I got another screen and I got a better microphone and all these kind of practical things to help in the task that we had to do. And I also, and we, I should say we, the students and I also experimented with more online resources. So the standbys from the first semester, but also some other online resources that provide uh, a variety of experiences for the students, some scope for collaboration, um, you know, a little bit more interaction perhaps, uh, because in the way that I decided to do my course. Uh, the interaction, we had high interaction during the class chat time, but actually each student was only required to be in class for a relatively brief period of time, like half an hour at most each, each week. And because of the internet and the timing that we're in, we actually could continue to, oh, sorry. Okay, that's interesting. Um, we did continue to have uh, an international visitor uh, because Zoom works around the world. And so it was possible to have someone, uh, um, a friend of mine from Canada who's a student and um, my Ruth, her name Ruth was able to share her experience as a student during this COVID-19 and what her university life was like. And again, positive impact, uh, feedback from the students here, but also from Ruth herself, the opportunity to expand your perspective by, by engaging with people from another country was really helpful. In addition, because we were online, the way that we set up the international visitor was quite different as well. And we used this Flipgrid, which is a video platform. And on the video platform, my, my guest, that's Ruth, was able to share a little bit of her story and what she was interested to hear about life under COVID from the students here. The students here were then able to upload a video in response. Ruth could listen to the students. So before we actually met in the Zoom session, there was opportunity uh, to kind of get to know one another because of the technology that we were able to use. Yeah. 
Right. Oh, now it comes up. So there it goes. I don't know why it didn't come up earlier, but there we are. Our uh, Zoom chat with Lucy. I'm going to skip that slide. Okay. Uh, so the thing is, there's all kinds of online tools for a higher education. Uh, this infographic or I guess you call it an infographic. It's the results from a survey done in September about the kinds of uh, online tools that are being used in higher education. Um, and so this is only the top 200. Uh, there are many, many more. And, um, you know, it can be quite a challenge to decide what tool should we use or will we use. I also expect that you have have used a variety of tools, and that could also be an interesting uh, topic to share or a point to share later. So we have these online tools. We're living in the 21st century where we have such opportunity to utilize uh, the internet and the resources on the internet. And I would like to suggest that the fact that we have all these resources, some of the resources on the internet are open, um, called open educational resources. And uh, we, you know, that's a real uh, resource that we should be bearing in mind as we look to develop, again, for Indonesian students, a kind of a more international perspective. Um, so this uh, diagram just illustrates we've got our educators who are connected in all kinds of different ways. And we have students who are connected in all kinds of different ways. The idea of this picture is that the only source of information for our students is, is no longer the educator, right? Our students are able to access information from lots of different sources. The educator more and more has the role of facilitating the students um, management or use of all those resources. It's a much bigger world in a sense than it used to be. Okay, and also that the open online spaces are, are not really tightly defined. A physical space, our classroom is defined. Our university campus is defined. Um, our learning management system that we may use at our campus is defined. Uh, and limited in some sense because of that. But online, it's, it's a really, really big world. And we should be thinking through how to help our students to utilize that resource as best as possible. All right, um, I think I just have a couple more slides here and we'll be able to go into our discussion time. Oh yes, I wanted to mention uh, earlier, I had mentioned Tony Bates as one of the uh, Canadian educators that I have uh, found really helpful to read his work and to think about uh, some of the things he's been reflecting on. He has done a fair bit of work during the pandemic, helping educators and administrators at universities try to make sense of some of the impact of the pandemic. But uh, perhaps uh, one of the most useful things he has done is made this open educational resource, uh, the, this book, Teaching in a Digital Age, available. It's, um, it's an ebook, it's online, uh, readily accessible. His main argument is that we need to first start with our pedagogy. You know, we have to have solid ideas and understanding of what it is that we're doing as educators. And then we choose the technology to support our pedagogy. So we don't just use technology because it's there, but he argues, I think very convincingly, that technology is there that really will help us be a more effective educators. So his key, matching pedagogy with technology. So, so social media can be used in lots of different ways, more than just communicating. Um, but we can think about how to use 
this resource that all of our students have in their hand in, in, as, a, as a tool for, for learning and education. It's a little bit outside of just an international uh, classroom. But again, because I'm working in the IPSC program where our students are new to the international scene, again, these kinds of things are really available and uh, can be used. Um, so as I already mentioned, all kinds of content that our students are able to access on the internet. The thing is, of course, it's overwhelming. Um, so we need to be able to support our learners as they um, seek and use and apply all this information. Um, we as instructors, again, don't have the last word on any topic. And, um, and we need to be able to uh, yeah, encourage our learners to explore and develop their skills. And so what we as educators need to do, right? We, we can't just say, yeah, just go and do whatever to our students. And yet at the same time, we do not want to be, you know, the, uh, the, the what's the term is a term, but anyway, we, we, we're not the holders of all knowledge. We need to be encouraging our students to explore and draw from a lot of different resources in order to develop the skills they need. As mentioned uh, earlier, uh, Tony, oops, Tony Bates has, um, oh, sorry, before I mention that, just another reflection question for us. Uh, has COVID-19 pushed us, us meaning educators in higher education contexts specifically, has it pushed us more quickly towards developing best practices for 21st century skills? You know, hopefully the challenge has led us to think through things or probably we're continuing to think through things and that this challenge will in fact help us to, uh, yeah, to move to perhaps to a new place. Personally, certainly in Canada, um, it seems clear that going forward, there will be more and more online courses being offered, that not everyone wants to return to 100% face-to-face student meetings as, uh, or classes as had been the case before. Some, we do need to go back to on-campus uh, interaction, but yeah, I probably as mentioned earlier by, I believe, Pak um, Datot, the flexibility that students want. We need to appreciate also the preferences and expectations of our students. So do you, would you agree that it is pushing us to more quickly adapt or, or what will be the impact of COVID-19 as we move forward? So again, uh, Tony Bates, I've mentioned him previously. He's recently published 10 lessons for a post-pandemic world in the context of higher education. And a quote from this um, uh, report that he's made, you know, in the long run, the development of the integrated face-to-face -face and online learning can be nothing but good for our students. So that meaning like if we are able to not think we have to be face-to-face 100% -face of the time, and online, online learning is a really a second best choice. He's arguing that part of what we're teaching should probably continue to be online. So he continues, we will have better trained, more adaptable instructors using modern teaching methods to prepare our students better for an increasingly digital age. So that is my, uh, the end of my presentation. Just a few questions as we go into the discussion. I'd asked, you know, what was your experience when we were suddenly faced with going online? What online tools did you find most helpful? Has COVID-19 pushed us towards developing some different best practices? And uh, yeah, of course, any other questions, please bring them to our discussion time. Uh, thank you. Terima kasih. Hatur
Sawang Sulna, thank you so much, Ibu Margi. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause to Ibu Margi. You can either give a virtual applause, just like what I did on the reaction button, using the reaction button, or a, a real one. Well, uh, now that the presentation of Ibu Margi has just finished, it's time for us to have a discussion, discussion session. Before I invite more questions, I would like to appreciate the earliest questions on the chat box. First one, we have a question from Ibu Risha to Pak Gatot. Please inform us about kinds of open educational resources that BINUS provide for the students and how is the tips for the lecturers high motivation to produce the material of the course, especially in the digital platform. Pak Gatot, would you kindly, would you like to kindly respond to the question? Sure, Pak Ubat. Thank you. Uh, Ibu Risha, good morning. Thank you very much for the question, Bu. Very interesting question. Um, on the, yes, morning, Ibu. Salam kenal. On the um, of, uh, open edu educational resources, I uh, hope my understanding is correct. Um, basically, we provide free range of resources from the student. Uh, we put them in our learning management system. Um, on the basis of link, for example, YouTube or video platform link, so students can access the open educational resources on their own that is related to the topic um, in the class. So we provide them the link. Or probably um, other video um, from open resources from other university, we will also provide the link to the students. However, we put the requirement uh, that is only limited um sources um from open sources such as youtube or other university link uh, we probably uh, because we want the lecturer to provide their own resources their own visual content their own video so therefore we limit them to um several resources but probably you may also extend or my understanding on the question is about open educational resources that the student can claim into their learning experience. If your question into that um, area, then yes, we have um, open the opportunity for students to get external certification. Uh, we call it as micro credentials in this case. Mm -hmm. Um, we have certificate of competence that student can get from the industry or from external uh, parties, such as, for example, um, Google Digital Garage um, or Google Analytics or YouTube Certified and so on. So we provide the opportunity for students to get that certification and later on, So we provide the opportunity for the student for that certification and later on they can transfer uh, as a requirement to pass the unit or in certain cases that can also be used for credit transfer. So that's um, the answer for your first question. Hopefully I get your, uh, I get your question right. Thank um, you. Second part. Um, uh, on the how to motivate the lecturer to produce the digital content for the course. Look, Ibu, that's definitely very difficult. We just started <laughs> for the last three years. So before the pandemic, definitely very difficult. But again, our rector, uh, Prof. Arianto Prabowo, uh, clearly mentioned that um, uh, new policy, new initiative, new idea, itu harus dipaksa, kemudian terpaksa, lalu bisa, kemudian biasa hingga jadi budaya. Jadi dipaksa Ibu, gitu ya. ya you can complain uh, uh, anything you like, but one director said you have to do this, then we have to do it, gitu ya. Jadi dipaksa, dipaksanya diletakkan, we, we, we put it in the lecturer key performance indicator as a faculty member sebagai dosen tetap atau sebagai structural that we put it in the uh, key performance indicator to produce at least let's say two digital content three video based learning we put it in the key performance indicator then once they done it according to the kpi they will got reward reward uh, um, additional incentive for example and also we have mini award mini award meaning the best video based learning provider the best bits provider the one that I showed you earlier is the finalist, uh, the top five finalists of BIPS 
uh, produced uh, by the lecturer. And um, one of my uh, colleagues uh, in the faculty also earned the best video-based learning, um, especially for the, for the tourism video-based learning. So we provide award and reward for the lecturer to do that. Also, we, pro, uh, we, we believe that if it is a good thing, we have to make it easier. We have to make it available for everyone. So that's why we have B-Box. We have that in every corner, not every corner. We have that in every campus, in certain, con uh, certain corner in our university to make sure that can be easily accessed. This is online resources. We can do whenever we want. We just need ac internet access. We just log in and we can use it. So. With that in mind, hopefully lecturer will be uh, encouraged to produce digital content. Last but not least, um, I think we are lecturer. We know that. I mean, uh, we 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 like to debate. <laughs> kita suka aja kita debat, nggak setuju dan sebagainya gitu kan. Apalagi in the direction is uh, top down instead of bottom up. So we usually have or invite the like successful lecturer who has been very successful in producing digital content, who very productive in producing digital content, or successful YouTuber uh, with more than 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Mm. We invite them to share the experience. And basically, they said that at the beginning, it's very difficult, but once they get acknowledgement, why they can get the traction right, what two, three video, and they feel that everything is very easy. And when they click, share the experience, it's different feeling. Uh, it is not their boss, it is not the rector, it is not the dean that push them, but if it is the colleagues, they have the tendency that they will follow. With that Iman, finally, we can get the ball running. Uh, so, so we are very lucky at this moment in time, during pandemic, we are ready to produce the digital mm -hmm. content. I think that's uh, my sharing through Risha. Thank you. Terima kasih, Pak Gatot. Very <coughs> encouraging. Answering. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pak Gatot and Ibu Risha, for the questions. And then the second question, it's still addressed to you, Pak Gatot, from Pak Abu Bakar. Uh, yeah, Binus is one of the private universities achieving several international recognitions. What an excellent effort. He wonders what the key factor is from the in terms of the institutional policies and also the funding. <laughs> So, yeah, Mas Gatot, would you like to please respond yeah, to this question? Thank you, Pa Ubat. Um, hello, Pa Abu Bakar Bitruna. Thank you very much for the question and also uh, hello, for pa. the... Hello, Pa, and for, also for the encouragement. To be honest, I don't know the answer. I don't know the correct answer, Pa. I don't know the correct <laughs> answer. And, 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 and I'm afraid that um, I think our answer will be probably the same with others as well. But what I felt, uh, because I'm not, uh, we, we call it Binusian, right? I'm not real Binusian in a way my undergraduate degree is not from Binus. <laughs> my master PhD is not from Binus. I'm not real Binusian. But what I learned is that I think the, the, the work ethic, the work ethic, the values that we have um, when we say Binus, Bina Nusantara, fostering and empowering the nation, our passion uh, to make um, uh, education as a source to develop the country. I think that that's coming from the heart. And with that in mind, we try our best um, to execute that with what we have. Yeah. For example, Bapak, um, I think I joined in 2008, and and it was it was uh, when we have a dream that we are going to be world class university. And it's like, forget about that. <laughs> that long way, but 12 years. 2020, we can achieve that in a way um, as the uh, appreciation from the uh, science higher education, uh, uh, QS rating and so on. I think uh, number one, we have a proper plan. Um, we have proper plan. We have um, strategic plan. Uh, it's a clear route of strategic plan. We have clear milestone 2020 and now have we, we have the new one 2035. We have clear plan, not only plan, but the way we execute it. The way they execute it, we stick to the plan. There are some changes, amendments, but then we always review it, uh, and we also stick to the gun uh, uh, in order to, to execute the plan. Um, I, and I think we have, a very long, uh, we have a very strong leadership uh, from our rector. is very strong. Uh, is very visionary. And uh, the way we, um, I think, um, manage to have transition during leadership and so on, that's that, that very, that, that very um, Binusian style. Um, 
for example, like most of the deans right now are around 40. So those who are more than 45 now in the position of business higher education as an advisor. So uh, the younger generation um, are doing the bit, the hard work, <laughs> the last sleep, uh, the month, the Saturday, Sunday work, and so on. The senior more on the consultancy and strategic work. Uh, final part, I think um, the academics, doing the academic bit, uh, the planning, the execution, the non-academic part, for example, human resources, um, financial planning, uh, financial management has been done by the professional. So BINOS are like, like corporate. So the system is like uh, um, a professional corporate system. We have key performance indicator, clear um, remuneration system, and those uh, those bits are performed by professionals, not by us and academy. So probably that uh, help us to concentrate on what we achieve rather than uh, you know not based on our ability. I don't know whether this is, this answers your question or not, but but that's that's the bit I think uh, uh, when we when we clearly have the vision, plan, and uh, values to execute that. Lastly, about the fund, I think we have full support from the yayasan. From the from the foundation, um, yeah, uh, we know we have the management and the yayasan, uh, the rector and the yayasan, and we are um, very strong um, understanding between the two. Uh, Alhamdulillah, tidak ada konflik, tidak ada masalah di antara kedua parties. Kita selalu bisa in line dan support dari yayasan luar biasa. Jadi itu juga yang membuat kemudian pendanaan dalam pencapaian itu begitu begitu luar biasa. Karena, for example, like international accreditation for ASGSB, we spend a lot of money. ASGSB uh, accreditation for business, and it's, it's only the second uh, and the only private uni to get business accreditation at ASGSB. Spend a lot of money, a lot of resources, because the lecturer has to be doctoral, uh, S3. Then for that, BINUS has to contribute to give scholarship, not only for the full timers, but also for faculty members and so on. That requires a lot of commitment, and I think we are lucky that we have the synergy between the rector and also the foundation. Um, I think that's, that's the short answer. I don't know the answer, but, yeah. but that's, I think, yeah. the key point. Mm -hmm. but, but. I, thought, I assume that the clue is uh, this UBINUS uh, implement corporate university uh, strategic planning program and also the enough fund to finance all program in that university yeah so that is maybe the uh, the words that make uh Uvinus is go ahead and recognize in international okay maybe it too <laughs> yes but i think i think that that's that the clue and uh, i think at the end of the day we are private university our our main stakeholders are students parents right um, industry and we are trying our best bit to make sure that um, uh, our students, our alumni, are uh, really um, achieve what their objective in learning in business. For example, our strategic objective or sasaran mutu, sasaran mutu kami adalah dua dari tiga lulusan bekerja di perusahaan global atau menjadi entrepreneur. So we measure it seriously, um, and it's it it all go down up to our KPI. For example, I'm I'm saying if my employability rate in Faculty of Economics Communication. Um, less than 67%, then it will impact my <laughs> my performance, okay. for example. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, uh, if, uh, if, we, if we say quality is our business, and UBINUS is backed up with a strong fund, maybe that is the, the secret, maybe. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Pak Gatot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, once again, thank you so much, Pak Gatot, and also Pa Abu Bakar for the question. Next, yeah. we have another question from Ibu Risha. This one is, this question goes to Ibu Anggi. Uh, just wondering about the development of curriculum of international study programs and how about the uh, job vacancy? So Ibu Anggi, would you like to be so kind to respond to the question, please? Okay. Thank you, Pa uh, Jeb Ubad. Uh, thank you for the question, Ibu. Um, basically, the international program that we have are uh, different with what business have, right, Pak Gatot? Because we don't have the uh, full uh, international program. We only have one semester and also short courses. 
So um, if uh, we see from the like uh, getting job vacancy or sort of stuff, uh, some of our students, which is from uh, international student, they can uh, find a job in Bali. So just uh, kind of like um, uh, things, uh, uh, you know, like different because they not only what would love to learn about tropical, uh, uh, I'm saying this in an architecture department, right? Uh, not just want to learn about tropical design or sort of stuff, but they also want to work here in Bali and part of Indonesia as well. So they uh, then they have a skill and also uh, knowledge about uh, design in tropical countries. So that's one thing that I can see become as uh, one of, you know, like the good thing from our program. Uh, some of them, uh, you know, like we will still keep in touch with my alumni. Uh, they uh, say that uh, Angi, uh, now I'm working in this kind of architect bureau and then uh, and, and I'll, um, I will join the, what is it, the, the principal architect to design uh, this resort or some of stuff kind of that and then move to uh, Sulawesi and also things like that. So um, yeah, that's that's all I can say that uh, they can have something more than other friends that they can be able to find a job in a tropical country as well. Some also work in Vietnam and the Philippines. I hope that um, answer uh, your question. Thank you. Terima kasih, Putri. Sama-sama, Ibu. Oke, okay. <laughs> terima kasih, Ibu Anggi dan Bu Risha. Ya, Ibu Bapak, before we move on to the next question, I would like to remind you to click the, the link for your attendance record. Oke. Okay. Oke, okay. And on behalf of the OP, there's no option for OP regional campus, but it has been revised. So those from regional OP regional campuses can choose Uh, the uh, link provided of the names of the faculty of the OP regional campus's name. Next question we have uh, from Pak Budi Setiawan and the question is addressed to both Ibu Anggi and Pak Gatot regarding the international student admission, progression and recognition and or international class perspective. How do you set up the curriculum to be in line with the national standards? For example, the ECTS system and SKS system. So, Ibu Anggi first or Pak Gatot? Ibu Anggi, probably okay. ladies first. Oke, okay, ladies first. <laughs> yes. okay. Thank you for the question. Yes, uh, for sure. Um, we already set up the curriculum adjusting to the international, I mean like national and also international curriculum. In architecture, we also like set uh, all the curriculum best based on uh, international standard as well as for the accreditation. And so this is include the international program as well. So like um, one example, like uh, one semester program that we have in Uh, tropical engineering, yeah, there, there are uh, like uh, six subjects that all the subjects are already uh, adjusted with the uh, national curriculum and also uh, international curriculum. So um, like I mentioned in my, uh, on, on my slide previously, like uh, the system like ECTS and how the, it's equivalent to the SKS system that we have. So basically they don't have uh, like a big gap Like we have one SKS is like 36 hours, but in one ECTS we have 25 to 30 hours, but now uh, in tropical engineering, we use uh, the 30 hours. So it's not uh, exactly like a, have a huge gap, but it's kind of similar. So uh, when we, we, we uh, what is it? Um, we break down that into all its subject. We know how many hours that we have to teach and how many hours that for the assignment and also the excursion and sort of stuff. I think uh, I'm not the expert for this, but that's what I can uh, explain. I hope that can answer your question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Ibu Angge and Mas Gatot. Would you like to add something to- uh, Thank you, yeah. Pak Ubat and also for, uh, Pak, Pak Budi Setiawan, if I Yes, but uh, my experience is that when we focus to when we focus to fulfill the criteria of curriculum for DC, 
146 credits for undergraduate degree, then we'll be fine. Uh, if you want to convert it into Australian system, European system, you'll be fine. Why? <laughs> because that's, that's to be honest, just a lot. Yeah? 20 credits for this semester, that will be a lot. Yeah? So that will be easy, for example, like we are dealing with Newcastle University. Um, we have um, six to seven um, units, mata kuliah per semester. Gitu kan? Um, ketika kita konversi ke uh, University of Newcastle, we can easily convert six to seven uh, um, into four uh, mata kuliah, four units from Newcastle University. So at the moment, we don't have any problems. Um, the key is uh, when we have our main curriculum, uh, according to DT, 146 credits, and then we link them to the graduate objective or student uh, uh, outcomes, then we'll be good, we'll be fine. Uh, it shouldn't be a problem. And we can easily map um, because, for example, um, for us, when we have to have double degree, we have to report it to DC. Uh, we have to allocate our curriculum. We have to inform it. Uh, we have to prepare NASCAR academic as well. Uh, when we paper those documents, we have to um, inform the mapping uh, from our curriculum to the curriculum of our partner. Um, so in summary, uh, it shouldn't be a problem because um, our curriculum is already heavy. Our curriculum is already not very flexible. So when we when we satisfy the curriculum from DT, basically uh, we can adjust with the system um, according um, to the, our partner. That's my experience. Yeah, um, thank you so much, Pak Gertot. Next, we have a question from Pak Dedi Suryana from the Faculty of Language and Literature Education. One thing that, that he can conclude from this discussion and this pandemic time. And since online learning is highly acceptable by all universities all over the world, in the future, he thinks that this experience will open the possibility to study overseas online. Is it? I would like to give an opportunity to Ibu Margi first to respond to the question. Ibu Margi, Manga. <laughs> yeah, terima kasih. Uh, yeah, baiklah. I, I would expect it will. I don't know. Um, of a lot of details uh, currently of how that will all work out. But I would say, you know, the, I mean, again, it's quite, it's interesting this, the previous question about how to on the requirements of the course in Indonesia with the international uh, credits and so on. It, it's complicated, I am sure. Um, and I uh, am no expert on that. But the opportunity to take courses um, and to receive um, like a recognition for the study that you have done, certainly the discussion that I'm following uh, in terms of what's happening in Canada is that there's a real trend towards um, more, uh, a more broad interpretation of what education is that going forward, you know, not everyone has the opportunity to go to university and, you know, how to uh, provide opportunities because we can with the online resources to people who would otherwise be limited uh, to that, uh, which then there's no reason why that is limited to one country, you know, particularly. Um, I think a big issue that is being discussed is how you would acknowledge the uh, the certification that you get from this university or from that course of study or um, this program that you completed right but um, there's a lot of work and a lot of thought being put into those things so I don't know I mean are we studying overseas if we study online we're still at home right we haven't had the whole experience of actually <laughs> engaging in a, in a different, completely different context. Um, but even so, I think that's, that's positive. I, again, it was uh, Pat Gato, I think you mentioned how your students are encouraged or allowed to take micro courses from other universities. And that is also something that I'm not sure is happening across Indonesia, but a new thing this year at UP, which I think is, is interesting. Several of our students in the IPSE program have joined uh, courses from universities around the world. It's the first, first time we've done this, so we're gonna have to evaluate how effective it is. Uh, but it's quite eye-opening for our students at the very least. You know, oh, that's really different <laughs> than um, 
that than their experience prior or otherwise. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank, yeah. thank you, Ibu Mari. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> so I, at, at least I, I can share my, my opinion in this. Yes. Uh, in this seminar, so everybody knows that. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. <clears throat> thank you so much, Bu Marge, and also Pak uh, Dedi, my teacher, uh, for stating <laughs> your opinion on this webinar. Bu Anggi and Pak Gatot, would you like to comment on this? Um, oh, Pak Gatot first, or? Okay, okay if you if you say so yeah <laughs> let's take like, yeah you know, yeah let's take turns <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, okay um thank you uh Pak Dedi. i think this is a very interesting question um and i would say my answer will be uh my statement will be unpopular opinion um among others uh but this is based on my observation we uh, um i first um, earlier, people will say that brick and mortar model of education is finished. Online is everything. We will like to study online. That's easier. That's cheaper. More accessible. This and that. This is the end of education. This and that. But I think pandemic, at least what we observe in Venus, say different facts. Students really miss their campus. Lecturer really miss their interaction day to day with the student. Students struggle to learn through Zoom. They have Zoom fatigue. They have enough with the assignment from the lecturer, right? Um, bahkan di dalam apa profile picture ya di Zoom sekarang tuh anak-anak tuh suka ini kita aja. Ini tugas apa kasih ibu sepanjang masa nggak ada selesainya katanya gitu kan. So they make some jokes like that. So my answer, Pa, um, I think um, at least from uh, the data that we have, um, the interaction, we are, we are social animals. We need interaction. Students need their friends. Lecturers need the student to see their direct face, their interaction. So I think to some extent, we still need this face-to-face -face interaction, especially uh, study like engineering from Buangi, Hotel management in my faculty, uh, um, tourism, they still need face to they still need face to face interaction. So um, at the end of the day, we still need the interaction. We love it. Um, the data from Dinos, the census that we have from next semester plan, 75% Pak Ubat. Even though pandemic, even though they have to fulfill the requirement of the parent, 75% of the census that we have, they want to go back to the campus they get tired by online learning so uh, so that that's probably uh, the, the the answer so we still need the experience we still need the skill to have face-to-face -face interaction however i did not offer right completely about online education as bumargi mentioned earlier online education will be still useful from those who for example in the uh, unaccessible area for people who have limited access, for example, to the face-to-face -face interaction, people yang D3 ke S1, D3 ke D4, dan seterusnya, they still need that. So there's still certain people, there's still certain uh, uh, who will be beneficial for the online education, but not in general. At least that's my opinion, Pak Thank you. Thank you, Pak well, thank you so much, Pagatot. Um, uh, Ibu Anggi, before before yeah, I ask you to respond to that, I, your Pa Gatot, that was such an interesting point of view, and it reminds me of my our discussion on the WhatsApp group with Pa Abu and Buniha, in which Pa Abu told us that he really enjoys this um, learning situation, and then Buniha told us that she really missed the good old days because yeah, you know nothing. To, to this day, nothing, nothing replaces face-to-face uh, -face interactions between the uh, teachers and also the students. And especially for us lecturers, sometimes with this online mode, the workload is unbelievable. <laughs> you know, it's 24 <laughs> seven. Yeah, so just saying. Yeah, Ibu Anggi, I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah, please, would you like to please comment on this issue too? Okay, thank you, Pak Cep uh, Ubat. Yeah, I'm really agree with Pak Gatot because I experienced that as well as a lecturer. You know, like 
Um, actually, I already published a paper about that, you know, like uh, online learning during pandemic. And I asked a student to fill up a questionnaire. And one of the weaknesses that they, uh, that they feel that they miss their friend, they miss the interaction with their lecturer, and they have lack of uh, mood or idea to, to, to uh, what I said, to make their assignment, because usually they have discussion with their friend sharing ideas and sort of stuff. When I asked, like, uh, I, I did some interview as well with students, like, you can do it online, but it's different. So, so basically, uh, I'm still agree with online uh, uh, system, but in some cases, just like, uh, like Margie also said, and Pak Gato, that's for like people who have less access to uh, like personal contact. And it should be mixed between offline and online. Uh, I'm uh, personally also do some um, offline because my student insists, Ibu Angi, can we meet, please? I don't understand. I don't understand this. Can we meet, please? And then I arrange the time with my students because uh, um, I'm teaching studio, which is the sign, and I need to, you know, like uh, help them with their concept and ideas and everything. So it's hard if I always do it online and they can't express uh, all of their ideas as well online. That's why we meet. Uh, like once a month with the COVID-19 protocol and we discuss uh, everything like what the question what the they're confused about and that's become uh, more effective and the student is really happy not only them but me as well because when they send me the assignment one student's like 65 pages in a three format it just make me headache to download and then to see and then to scroll all the drawing it just like make me want to vomit but when i meet them personally i can see the drawing so it's easily automatically for me just you know, my hand is just um, dancing through all the uh, drawing and fix this, fix that. So just, uh, yeah, basically just like um, make us all happy, not the lecturer and, but the student as well. But for the online, uh, uh, what is the system? Uh, one uh, thing that we have right uh, at the moment that we have uh, seven students who study um, online in one uh, semester course with uh, international credit transfer. That's one thing that we can see, give the opportunity to our student to learn uh, overseas but during uh, uh, this pandemic. So they learn a lot of things they get, uh, they can access, I mean, I like get access of all the resources. Uh, we, uh, uh, at the moment, we, we have students who study at Kobe Woman University, University of South Alabama and University of South Australia. So that's kind of thing that I can see uh, like uh, a positive thing that my our student can get from this system. But so far, like um, it should be mixed. Can't, can't do all with the online system. I think that's all from me. Thank you. Thank well, you. thank you so much, Ibu Angi. And I believe that all of us here can relate to your situation. Mm -hmm. And let's just hope that the tagline of Kasih Ibu, I think it's not only relevant to the students, but also to us as lecturers and researchers, because it's never mm -hmm. ending. The workload keeps increasing over time, right? Yeah. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there is um, a request from Pak Budi. He says it will be much uh, yeah, he would be much grateful if Ibu Angi and Pak Gatot uh, give us brief and deep, deep overview about OBE, the, the outcome-based education, he says. So, Pak Gatot or Bu Angi? <laughs> Pak Gatot, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, thank you, Bu Angi and Pak Ubat. Yes, uh, I think this, that's a very relevant question. I think we do understand that um, the direction that we have in terms of curriculum development is based on OBE, uh, Budi Setiawan, Outcome-Based Education. And I completely, uh, I mean, we, we in business completely love it in a way because it, it's opening up a lot of, uh, it's opening up uh, Pandora boxes for us. Why? Um, first, we have implemented because we do understand that a lot of international accreditation um, for study program require OBE. Um, for example, we have EPAS, AACS, BEAC, they require all outcome-based education and we start to implement it. And now we are in the phase of 
I'm reviewing. So uh, now uh, not review, uh, we have implemented for two semesters and we currently impl uh, reviewing the implementation of OBE in Venus University. Um, what we like about uh, OBE is, like I said, opening the Pandora boxes in a way that we are focusing on the outcome of the student. We are not, pro not only focusing on the process of learning, but also the, the, the outcome. Um, uh, in a way that um, I think if we are brave enough, if we brave enough, um, we can make the idea that probably the learning process may not be focused on the 13 weeks of time, for example. We can easily divide the study process like four weeks, I don't know, six weeks, if they can achieve the outcome-based education with the assurance system that we put in place, definitely, then um, we can speed up the process of learning. Again, this is part of our answer um, that our education system is too rigid. We are not be able to you know, deal with the external pressure where the certification model, the learning model is much quicker. And I think we really welcome the OBE we have implemented. And I think uh, we know that in Pak Rekord's mind, uh, he will change some of the model. So we may see that study in business in certain credit can be shortened um, because we are focusing on, on, um, on the outcome. Um, I think that's, that's uh, uh, our, our take uh, on our outcome-based education. Um, uh, hopefully that answer uh, your question. Ah, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pak Gatot and Ibu Anggi. Would you like to please also add something to the OBE overview? Okay, uh, thank you so much uh, for the question. Actually, I'm not the expert of this, yeah, but if uh, we can see that the outcome-based uh, education, it's just like uh, not uh, like similarly like what Pak Gatot said, like more into the process and doing review and feedback of what we have done and then uh, you know like learning from that and we just keep uh, doing what uh, what is like uh, the plan that we already set and also with the feedback and the review we can know uh, what is going wrong and then uh, try to uh, figure out uh, how to uh, you know like uh, minimize the the negative impact or sort of stuff and uh, learning by that process and uh, the what is it uh, the stage or the the plan that we we already uh, have set uh, it's really important so so far uh, there's not uh, many like uh, things that I can say uh, I think that's uh, from me thank you okay thank you so much uh, Ibu Angge well before I, I invite... like a little bit oh, sure sure on, sure on the, on, on the OB, OB and I think um, I don't know whether Bapak Ibu also share the same problem the issue with us with OB is just the paperwork I mean the paperwork the evidence uh, the evidence of that OB uh, because we follow the international accreditation we mm. have to provide the evidence and that uh, that's painstaking, painstaking work um, in terms of the, the mm. um, providing the evidence of the OBE um, because in every uh, yeah, yeah. Um, assessment, every evaluation, we have to make sure that they achieve the outcome as uh, mentioned in the student outcomes or the graduate attributes. Oh. That's a challenge, especially if we um, right now during the evaluation, uh, all the, the, the documents are soft copy file, we download it from the system, and we have to write it one by one and make a summary of the result and make a comments. The paperwork is just difficult. Uh, yeah, especially in, in business, we, we have like seven days, but then we have to submit the, the mark. Um, if you miss the seven day deadline, then your KPI will be gone to the window. So we have only seven days to mark wow. it. Like one class, two classes, we have to do it in seven days. Wow. Yeah, um, so, so it's tough. The paperwork sometimes will be then make us feel difficult. But hopefully, um, if we have a more um, digital system, um, meaning that uh, we have a system in place and can ha help us easier the, the paperwork, that will be much better. But at the moment, that's the, that, that, that way we felt right now. Thank you so much, Magato. Wow, that must be the most exhausting seven days of their life, preparing the, the dates that needed the evidence of the outcome-based curriculum. Thank you so much. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, before I invite more questions, just a gentle reminder for those who haven't filled out the attendance uh, link, it is provided on the uh, chat box. So please kindly click on the link and then fill in the information. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, is there any more questions or comments or things to discuss with the with our extraordinary three speakers today? Yeah, uh, so. Actually, I have a question. Ah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please, yeah. Ibu Margi. <laughs> Yeah, I have a question for Pat Gato. I was quite interested in the, the B box and um, the bits. Now I didn't quite follow if the bits was like an LSM uh, for, for your university or quite what that is. But I, from, from what you have shared, since you mentioned it initially, I gather these things have been part of um, Binos for many years. Is, is that right or is that? Is there something quite new? Uh, yes, thank you, Margie. It's, it's something quite new for us. So first, we have our uh, own LMS, Learning Management System. We call it Binus Maya. So that's our own learning platform. So we put everything in the uh, interaction, discussion forum, and so on. Um, so we have that Learning Management System. Then to prepare the digital content, uh, because the rise of digital content, uh, MOOC, and so on, then we develop a bit uh, the software that enable the lecturer to prepare their own uh, 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 digital content okay. uh, on their time. So that's, they can be done everywhere, but uh, uh, as long as they have the connection. But the limitation of it is that uh, we only use it for digital content uh, in terms of interaction uh, in digital animation. So more on animation only. As I, okay. uh, as I as I as I uh, uh, show you earlier, but for the B box, that's more interactive. We have video, we have voiceover, and also um, they can edit uh, in certain uh, um, interactive way. And B box instead of online, uh, that will be placed in the campus. Then we can book the time and schedule, and then uh, they can use it in the uni. So that's what we have. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you. So, Pagatot and Bu Anggi, do you, do you also have a question to Ibu Margi? In case you you want to reverse the role. <laughs> no, I think I have to learn from Ibu Margi because she has really like um you know sort of source of online resources. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's really, really good. So I'm just, you know, like just the beginners. It's not yet like Pak uh, Gatot as well, like a, a, a famous YouTuber. So I'm just still learning, <laughs> like very gag up with this, like suddenly you <laughs> online and you have to make uh, all the materials, uh, study material in an uh, online system. And then just uh, lucky that I have children that who taught me how to do it. So, so I learned from my, my, my children. So. All right. And, you know, Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if there is no more questions or comments, I believe we have come to the closing of today's webinar. But before the closing, Pa Abu, would you like to say a few more words, please? Yes, well, bad. Uh, thank you very much. So once again, I'd like to extend my appreciation to Dr. Gato Suprianto, to yeah, as Gato, to Buangi, and also to Bumargi for your very sharing, very informative and also insightful experience of uh, running the international uh, at the university. Uh, well, is it just me or Pa, pa Abu is raising? Uh, yes, it's freezing at Pa Abu. Last, last oh, okay. his voice. Pabu, we lost you. <laughs> Hello. Okay, now you're back. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, now I got that uh, technological glitch. I'd like to thank all the very influential speakers. I would hope that our lecturers from our university will learn from these practices and we will apply it in our international program. Because starting next year, uh, we will have more uh, international program 
in, in each faculty and regional Are we losing his voice again? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, hello, Bobert. Yeah, yeah. Now you're back again. <laughs> Sorry, my connection is, is is really bad. Yeah. So once again, thank you very much, the speakers, Pak Gatot, Bu Anggi, and Bu Margi, and also thank you all audience. Terima kasih banyak. Adur nuhun untuk para uh, dua Pak Dosen dari UPI, dari Ibu Dekan, Dekan dan semuanya. Dan ini adalah uh, sesi yang webinar terakhir untuk tahun 2020, karena okay. kita sudah akhir tahun dan akan memasuki uh, laporan segala macam. Tapi insya Allah tahun depan kita akan berjumpa lagi dengan semangat yang lebih baru lagi. Kita mudah-mudahan nanti kita bisa mengundang lagi Pak Gatot, Ibu Anggi, Ibu Margi untuk sharing yang lebih jauh lagi. Dan mudah-mudahan COVID-19 sudah berlalu, sehingga nanti kita bisa yeah. mengadakan real, uh, bukan lagi web, ya, tapi real seminar. Kita berjumpa secara langsung Bandung ataupun nanti. Mungkin kita ini kan ada ekskursinya nanti Pak Ubad akan mengajak kita bertemu dengan Ibu Anggi di Bali. Ya. Setuju. Setuju. Mengajak Pak Gatot, Pak Bubakar, dan semua yeah. untuk ekskursin di Bali. Sekali lagi, terima kasih Bapak-Bapak semuanya, para pembicara atas nama UPI. Saya mencapai terima kasih dan mudah-mudahan apa yang kita lakukan pada hari ini mendapatkan manfaat yang serius untuk kemajuan lembaga kita terutama universitas. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much, Pak Abu, for the speech and for officially closing the session. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our uh, today's webinar. Uh, I am Ubat, your today's moderator, signing off. Thank you so much once again, and my apologies for any inconvenience. Stay safe and stay healthy. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum Bye. warahmatullahi Bye. wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Matur Sukma, Bu Anggi. Pak Dedi, hayu nyanyi Pak Dedi. Pak Dedi, silakan Pak Dedi. Masih ada waktu untuk dua lagu. Ya. Bagger Band, gimana kabarnya Bagger Band? Pak Dedi masih mute. Masih mute Pak Dedi. Pak Dedi itu salah satu vokalis kita, Pak Gatot dan Bu Anggi. Itu, oh, gitu. itu, itu judulnya dia. Iya. Iya betul. Ya, jadi itu lagunya lagu, lagu, lagu saya Anji. itu. Oh, ya itu dia ini royaltinya Pak Ubat royaltinya udah diberikan kepada itu royaltinya itu tuh harus iya. itu lagu saya ya nanti dalam bentuk IBK lah Pak ditransfer oleh Pak Abu saya izin dulu Bapak-bapak terima kasih ya, buat terima kasih silakan silakan Pak Gatot terima kasih Pak Gatot terima kasih Pak Gatot hari hari ya ya terima kasih Pak Dedi terima kasih ya you too oke okay, be safe Pak Ubat thank kalau mati di PPT tiap pesantren ada Pak Kita akan kirim Pak Abu, kita akan kirim lewat email ke ya, semua ya, peserta. Thank you, thank you. Nah, insya Allah. Ya, terima kasih Bapak. Bapak, Bapak. Semua materi akan dikirim ke email peserta. Terima kasih Bapak, 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 Bapak semuanya. Terima kasih Pak Abu, Pak Uber, sama-sama. Bu Ber, sama -sama. Izin ya lab ya. Mangga, 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 Pak. Mangga, mangga, mangga. Terima kasih banyak, Pak Uban. Iya, saya langsung lah, Pak Abu. Saya juga ya. mohon pamit, ya, mohon pamit, Liv. Ya, sama-sama, Hatunu. -sama, ya. Memang gak saya akan tutup, ya. Ya, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.
Bapak, Bapak, terima kasih. Mohon maaf, saya mau close ya. Sebelumnya, Hatrohon, Sadayana.